Cat with Bear! Hey, podcast kissers, it's Kathy Cat and Lady Bird! Welcome to another schnozzle nozzling episode! A very special anniversary celebration! It's celebrating! A schnoggle noggling, it's stalking off! Cat with Bear! 100 episodes! 100! That is oh, that was phenomenal. Like we, how did we get here? We should have put up some balloons. We should have decorated <sighs> the place. Eh? Should it, imagine some balloons here right now. Maybe we can edit some balloons in. Thank you so much. So balloons are in. We balloons are ready. In. Here we go. I'm going to throw a paper clip at the camera. Oh, missed. All right. <laughs> we haven't thrown something for a while, so well, I thought it seemed appropriate. It's time to throw something. Um, in, in, 100 in, episodes. In We've been here 100 flipping episodes, that bro. That is a serious achievement because most there is a bore for podcasts. Going past episode ten is hard. Episode twenty is like the break, make or break. There's not many podcasts that make it further than that. Fifty is the next barrier, mm-hmm. and hundred is already super rare on the world of podcasts. Bananas, we did it. We did it. We, we breached it. the hull of a hundred. And you guys a have hundred. been here with us for that. And we have some mm. special announcements as well during this. So stay all the way till the end because you can participate in a very special mm-hmm. uh, becoming episode of Cat with Beards. So there's a lot of excitement stuff going on. We're going to summarize some of the most exciting episodes. And we also need you to let us know what your favorite episode is. That's exactly correct. So, Cathy Cat. We've been here for 100 episodes now. Yes. Season one, season two. Out of 100% episodes, we have had 29 guests. 29 guests. Where there are 52 episodes of guests, including special YouTube content. We have YouTube exclusive. Exclusive. special exclusive. YouTube content. Over 55 hours length worth of episodes. Ooh. A lot of talking. That's a lot of chatting. Lot of so frivolity. we can literally serenade you through like several days of just listening to our beautiful voices. Yeah, that's right. You could put it on repeat. Re-listen to some of your favorite episodes. Hey, hey, you can listen to all the hey, hey, it's from Ladybeard that you ever wanted to listen to. You could. Yeah. You could. You could make one giant back-to-back 55-hour-long episode and just stick it on while you sleep. Yeah, just have that going maybe while you're driving, while you're sleeping. I wonder what kind of a subliminal effect that would have on the human brain, on the unconscious, if it's just us non-stop while you're sleeping. You suddenly want to dress cute. You might. You suddenly want to dress cute and metal and yeah. rock. You might. Anything could happen. Mm. Um, Kathy Cat, you have had 28 costume variations. Yeah. Which is I'm a ton, ex- frankly. I mean, like with the one that I'm wearing right now, we're to 29. I've had about four. So <laughs> you've done very, very well, my friend. I, I, I still, one day I want to like make you an outfit. Please do. I want to try. I need you I need a sewing badly. machine, but I I, I'm stuff. sure I could try. Thank you. That'd be great. Yeah. And uh, we've had... 81 adjectival introductions to the show. Yay! 79 for me from Cat the Cat. Two. <laughs> well, I usually don't do the adjectives. Oh, You're right. way better. At- you did today, you schnonky conkling episode. <laughs> <laughs> See, like, I was just, oh my God, I was not prepared for it. It's like, a random word, it just became schnozzle nozzling. <laughs> I threw it at you. I did. I put you <laughs> so, on the spot. Schnozzle nozzling. You now did a great job. Makes it three now. Did it? That's so exactly right. Now Lady Beard, 80 now, and Kathy Cat. <laughs> Three. This I'm not sure excellent. schnozzle nozzling counts as a ah, word of the English Schnozzle nozzling is 100 It's awesome. We make like a YouTube short schnozzle nozzling, the, uh, the, <laughs> the compilation of schnozzle nozzling moments. Schnozzle nozzling. I love a schnozzle nozzle. Oh, we, have, uh, we have actually, um, we're going to talk about some of our most memorable moments. Yep. Also any behind the scenes. And we're also to tell which, which we think was one of the best episodes. Um, but we're going to first go through the list. Yep, the list. So we're going to give you a good um, summary. And if you missed any of those episodes and you're like, hey, hey, I want to know when that was, then uh, we're also going to give you a little, it's like an index also for you guys to maybe find your way around the episodes that we already released. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you're new here, new to the podcast, we will give you a verbal introduction to everything we've done so far. Actually, I think what we've done really well in this podcast is how to connect people from abroad with people yeah. in Japan. You know, sometimes we take a little bit, you know, we... we pick up some Japanese customs and we, you know, we talk about it a little bit, make it entertainment. But also we have met some people who really made it big in Japan, who shared some vital secrets mm-hmm. and like some big truths. Each episode, we kind of got away with learning something. A lot has been learned. 
We've so, met a lot of interesting people as well, which has mm. been something, hasn't it? So I can highly recommend you guys to check back to some of those episodes, which we are going to talk about with now. Mm-hmm. So you said episode, episode one was how to become big in Japan. Big in Japan. That's exactly big right. What kind of personality gets famous in Japan? Well, okay. So mm. what kind of personality? Mm. I think it's much more a case of rather than specifically a personality type or this kind of person or that kind of person or whatever, it's uh, who can successfully capture the imagination of the locals. Mm. I think that is what, what it comes down to. And now, now, Japan being the unique country that it is yes, and the Japanese having the unique tastes that they do in comparison with uh, you know, general populations of many other countries, um, to capture the imagination of the Japanese is quite the thing. Capture the imagination, what do you mean? Well, okay, so for instance, Bob, like I say, mm-hmm. he's this gigantic, muscle jacked maniac. He was a very good kickboxer back in the day. Um, he knocked out you know, several champions and so forth. But at the same time, he's all super cute and adorable when mm. he smiles and whatnot, right? So to that end, he's sort of like, he's like a real life Sam Rio character. You know? Ah, okay. Yeah. So to that end, he successfully captured the imagination mm. of the Japanese populace. I think they in Japan they like doing a lot is like have a person as a character. Yeah, like I you really are a character, and if they need a certain character, you, they fit you into that. Like, okay, we need for this program, we need mm. someone who is funny but has also this, or well, funny and right. also foreign, or funny and this and this. Sometimes it seems like you need to to get make it really big. You need to like be a rounded character that people can use, and you need to be very good at talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's so. Yeah, get your Japanese skills as oh, good as you possibly yes. can before you come. Number two, episode two was the weird life of Japan. Your garbage and your porridge and your aliens. Oh, and it's the have get you. the duck oh, out. Oh yeah, the get the duck out Kyoto porridge. Get That's the- right. The between the lines communication in Kyoto is something else. So, for instance, if you're around at someone's house and um. I say you're out and about. Mm-hmm. You're enjoying yourself. Mm-hmm. It's a Saturday afternoon. Yeah, you're on the back of You get find a yourself. Of yeah, hey, fine, yeah. hey, hey, look, Kathy Cat's house is not Woo! far from here. It's just the next block Go over. Let's, place. let's pop in, see how she's doing. Now, it seems reasonable, right? We're friends. We can pop into yeah, your house. Yeah, right? yeah. It seems reasonable. See. I come to your door, knock and knock, knock. <laughs> <laughs> you'll open the door, big smile. You'll welcome me into your house. You'll sit me down. You'll say, all right, I will get us something thing to consume. Mm-hmm. You head into the kitchen, you come back, and you give me a little bowl of porridge. Okay. Yeah, in Kyoto. And oh, this porridge. porridge, Yes. what this means is, this, the idea is, this is an appetizer. Mm. I mean, this is an appetizer which we eat before a main meal is prepared. Oh, so I'm preparing you a meal now. Well, but you, you just... are preparing a meal, but I'm not necessarily invited. And you find that out because you got a bowl of porridge? Oh, that's correct. What? Mm-hmm. Okay, what? What? Oh, I'll sit you what? down. They'll sit you down. Is I'll the bring you a bowl like of porridge. A- and the porridge is the get the duck out porridge. Oh, it's passive aggressive porridge? Passive aggressive porridge. And what they might even do is they might even sit you down in the particular room in their house. Which will have, they have a room specifically for this purpose, which will have a painting on the wall of a particular bird, a particular sparrow or robin oh, okay. or something or rather. That Make a is, fly. That's the get the duck out bird. Oh. So if you're sat down, <laughs> it, yes, he's nodding, he knows what's like. exactly, what? yeah. The Japanese team in our studio, they're no all nodding. Way. So if you get sat down in the get the duck get out the room, duck out room and give it the get the duck out porridge, <laughs> you know that you are not welcome. Get the duck out get the porridge. Duck out. Get the duck out get porridge. The duck out. If you, if you don't know what that is, check out that check episode. That was number hilarious. Two. Number three, we had English. <laughs> and horror stories. We had a mix of that. Man, I feel offensive saying that. English. So I got a feeling that's going to be cut into a... That was a, uh, okay. That was okay because our director at the time he came was up Japanese with that topic. And he said it, not us. That's right. He said it, not us. My goodness. Mix. And horror stories in Japan. That was number three. Don't throw away dog. Oh, don't throw away dog. Where'd you say that? It's for the dog, like the litter, the dog litter. So there's a lot of signs oh, around Tokyo. Okay. Oh, sorry, I knocked the microphone. There's a lot of signs around Tokyo where, like, please clean up after your dog. Yes. Please take that home. And people will do. They have like these little plastic bags and they carry it. Come everywhere. with a bottle of water. They spray. Yeah, they yeah. spray. They're really clean. But yeah, don't throw away dog. Don't it's throw away one dog. Of those. Similar to the infant, I imagine a bunch of that OG sons were like ah, this whole time. <laughs> what? What? 
don't throw. You're looking for a pet bottle bin to just kind of wedge him into. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, it's hard to find trash cans. That's probably well, why. Well, that's right. As we discussed in episode two. Yeah, yeah. there's no trash cans here. So <laughs> that's another thing. Okay, 2019, Yamaguchi University has this wonderful flyer brochure. And you have two people pointing into the sky with like smiley faces, a guy and a girl. And the tagline in English is, be offensive. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Be, Be offensive. offensive. Yes. Next one, my friend Yuriko Tiger yeah. came on the podcast for first episode four and five. You're first, first guest. guest. That's right. Talking about professional cosplaying mm-hmm. in Japan and how you can make that happen for yourself. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of cosplayers around the world, but not so many who are professional cosplayers. Mm-hmm. So that's actually something to take away for people who actually want to try their try their try luck the hand and hard work because it's hard work. Oh man. At that time, like um, 10 years ago, cosplayer was not a job. Uh, of course, yeah. It right. was very, at the same time, like, uh, one of the most popular uh, Japanese cosplayer as Enako. Mm. We was like mm. both. But it was very difficult to uh, understand by so, the client. Sorry, like even in Japan, yeah. 10 years ago, cosplayer was not really a job. No. So that has now changed in the last years. Because I was, of course, like, oh, yeah, maybe it was a job all along. No. So that has changed recently. That it's is actually really a job. changed recently. <gasps> to the big client, a big company, choose a cosplayer to do the promotion. Mm, not a bef- model. Not no a model. Singer, not no, idol. because I think it's, it's useless. Because the model, sh- sh- they can do anything. Alone, they can do makeup, they can do pose. They don't know the game, mm-hmm. and after the promotion, they <coughs> literally throw up. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. okay, I finish it. Go the next one. Mm-hmm. A cosplayer. If you are a cosplayer, you know the passion. You know how much you work for mm-hmm. that. And number six, we had Japanese comedy. Is it too difficult for foreigners? The answer: Yes. yes. <laughs> we, we, <laughs> Straight up. Yeah, oh my god. We both agree. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes any sense at all. <laughs> Nothing makes any sense at oh all. Oh my gosh, our director at the time, for he loves Japanese oh. comedy, but comedy is one thing that's really hard to translate. We struggled a little bit. There was a point recently <laughs> when, I can't remember, we were watching it at the office for some reason, and she already sat me down and took me through clips and was like, this comedian's gag is this. Everyone knows that. That's why on this separate clip, when he did it, everyone knew what was coming. Therefore, they can make a gag out of countering his gag. And I'm like, how would I ever know this unless someone sat me down and explained it to me? You know, if you don't grow up watching it, mm-hmm. it really is like you have to have it forensically broken down and explained to you. It sounds Otherwise, like an it's insider just a bunch joke. of loud noises and nonsense, you know? Yeah, it's like an in- insider joke. The exactly. moment you explain it, it's not funny anymore. But if you were there at that time, it's super hilarious. Yeah. In theory. In theory. So that's Japanese comedy. And next it's, one. It's kind of funny how as we relive these, we're going, oh, just, <laughs> going through hey. the whole thing. It's good, though, because the next one is Japanese Idol oh, World. Being an so idol, I know all about that. That's Holy your world. area of expertise. You. you are an idol. Oh, yeah. let's, let's not talk about that either. That's a whole oh. new world. AKB48 is a idol group that comes out of Akihabara, which is the center of, you know, kawaii culture for like anime manga geeky kind of otaku stuff. And they started off with like a little cafe. They were all having make costumes as well, but they were also doing performances and then the the head of them, uh, the clever man, came up with some really clever ideas of how if you want to support this girl, this one girl, as a fan, you get the power to do things, but you have to also spend a lot. So you have to... For every CD you buy, you get something. You get maybe a thing to vote for your first favorite person to be in the center when she's dancing. Mm-hmm. Or you get the chance to shake hands with them. Mm-hmm. And from the t- that was literally <coughs> just the time when people stopped buying CDs and started doing digitally. Mm-hmm. And people weren't really buying albums as much anymore. But because of the system, people would go and buy 50, 100, thousands of CDs for those vouchers, tickets, those kind of special things to support their favorite girl. And that has shifted the entire market here, the music market market in Japan, to a completely new thing. And now that system that started with AKB48 is now getting used for pretty much all the other idol groups too. Episode eight was a special episode. Yeah, we had Kason on the show. 
was our first ever virtual guest. Yes, uh-huh. very well done. If you haven't seen Ooh. that one yet, we actually have Kason in the studio <laughs> with Kaysen us. And uh, sitting on a chair beside us. Sitting on a impressive. chair beside us. Apparently at home, she was just in her birthday suit is what she told us. Holy moly. Oh my gosh. I remember. Scandalous. The, I love the, it. The line I remember love from it. that show was where Kason said, I'll squat on Elon's face. That's I do not remember, remember that, remember that line. No, I, I just said remember. something about Elon Musk. And she said, I'll squat on Elon's face. Like, Holy moly. So you want nice. me to squat? I'll pop do a it. squat, baby. Like this? Oh! Yeah. Oh! Oh! oh, damn, she oh! did. Who can do that? Who can do that? I can't do that. Oh, no, we can't. <laughs> can, can you do that? Certainly not in Lolita fashion. Like I said, Lolita fashion police, they'd get me. Oh, my god. But goodness. if we're not part of the pack, we could try. Shall we try? Yeah, we are part of the pack. Okay. We just squat yeah, on our chairs. How are we going to handle this? What's going to oh, happen? Yeah, oh, yeah. All right, chair. here we go. Pop a squat. You ready? Here Three, we go. Three, two, Say one. No. Mm, bah. Oh, oh. I need a picture of this that. This is badass. Oh, oh. No, it's okay. Oh. So badass. You oh, guys with goodness. me now, Ken Beer. Oh, right. You guys with me now. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> the K-K book it all case on pack. Yeah. It's part of the case on pack now, the case on class. She does not, you know. She doesn't hold back. She does not hold back, but I, I like the idea of like she was like, you know, she, like it. Delinquent, 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 delinquent. Uh, sorry, like a delinquent, like squatting in front squatting. of the kumbini, chilling there, and just the image of all of us chilling and squatting in Squats front of the galore. kumbini. We got squatting to talk about later on. We also <laughs> did actually send her a celebration video we for uh, mm. for her birthday. So we that we're still we're still in touch. She's That's awesome. Yeah, so she's next one, um, you should take that one. Uh, my mate Hartley Jackson came in pro wrestling. We spoke about pro wrestling in Japan. Episode nine, ten, and eleven. And to be honest. That's on me. It was only supposed to be a two episode mm-hmm, one, mm-hmm. but I was so curious mm. and so excited. I did not know all the things, all the facts you guys would drop me, the truths mm-hmm. about wrestling in Japan mm-hmm. and just how different it is from wrestling abroad, mm-hmm. wrestling in the US. It's nothing compared to the stuff that's going on here. Mm-hmm. So that was like, I wanted to know more and that's why we actually had him for three episodes. It also seems like, You've never been in a room with that much testosterone. Oh before. yeah, that was amazing. <laughs> I was like, wow. That was so this funny. This feels different. That was so funny. So much muscle and testosterone. <laughs> I used to wear wrestling trunks, mm. traditional wrestling trunks, budgie smugglers undies, you know, like just, wrestler. Just, sorry, do you know that expression, budgie smugglers? <laughs> That's what we call small underwear in Australia, budgie oh. smugglers. It's like you're Put a budgie down your pants. You're trying to smuggle it. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. okay, very so, tight. So, yeah. very tight. <laughs> I used to wear the traditional wrestling tights, and after one of the matches, they're like, "Oh, can you do the main event match?" And I'm like, "Yeah, it's no problem," because uh, someone got hurt, and it was an exploding <gasps> barbed wire <laughs> bat <laughs> death match. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> Now I like I like deathmatch wrestling and stuff like that, so I love doing it. But I didn't expect like so I got hit with the bat and it exploded, but then all over my legs and body were just oh. horrible burns. Oh wow! Yeah. So from then on, that's when I changed into my okay. jean deathmatch kind of style uh, pants. So if it was ever surprised, I was always ready for it because then sometimes, and then I started wrestling a lot of those style of matches. Did you start putting on a wife beater so that your skin? No, I was always topless. Okay. Because I still kind of like I don't mind being hurt burnt here okay. just not in between the legs rough oh, <laughs> you know? yeah. I, I highly recommend the youtube episodes because i'm just like like a little <laughs> he's so funny i was on the phone with him again the other night he's so funny i love him <sighs> then we moved on episodes 12 and 13 that is nano and nano brandon, and brandon. So, nano and brandon that's a singer and her manager mm-hmm. in a duo it's interesting because her manager is one of the first foreigner managers to also talk. So it was not mm. just Nano talking about music and such, but it was also like how to become an anime singer, yeah. a famous anime singer, but also the untold hero of the Japanese entertainment industry, the talent manager. If you guys want to work in the industry, if you want to be a talent, check both episodes out. Mm, Very vital, vital truths there. Very interesting. Just speak about managers. Round of applause for Shiori. Shiori! Shiori! 
Yay, you are awesome. You can now be represented visually on this Lady podcast, Beans I believe. manager, Shiori, is literally our angel on the podcast, and she actually made this whole list She did. Bless her. Shaza. That's what we call her. <laughs> that's what you call her. I've never called her like That's that. an Aussie nickname oh. for a person named Shiori. Shaza. Or Shaza. Aussies, Aussies, get behind Shaza. me in the comments, please. I want to make, make it in name. I want to call you Shioring. Shioring? Yeah, <laughs> like, not named, like, like, a, like a Gyaru name always. Oh, so right. you take Shiori and yeah. you just add an N in the end and make Shioring. Oh, really? Yeah, I want to. Can I do that? Yes! If we put Shiori in like a, a black hood and gave her a sickle, she'd be the Shiori Reaper. Not, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I don't think she likes that name so much. What if we uh, give she her? She doesn't seem to be so confident. What if we just um, uh, picture her always eating an apple? That way she'd be Shioringo. Um... I'm awesome at this. <laughs> Anyways. So Nano and Brandon, they were excellent. Check them out. Then we had two episodes. 14 was episode School Life in Japan. Some <laughs> funny things. You loved cool. that. You were all about it being the ex-teacher that you are. You know all about school life. school life. I know nothing about it. I didn't go to school in Japan. I've never been to a Japanese school. I'm like, oh, I don't know what's going yeah. on. What I thought was really nice in Japanese schools is all the other things around the studies. Okay. Meaning those groups in the mornings okay. where you kind of hang I out see. with your senpai. Or after school, there's a lot of school clubs, like club activities. Mm. And that can go from physical things like sporty things or just like study things like literature. Or it can even go to say, um, come on, let's, let's make a newspaper or let's make the radio announcements. Mm. There's a lot of little jobs that kids have to do in elementary school in Japan, which I think is cute. It goes from watering the flowers to taking care of the rabbits to making sure you dish out food at our, our lunch time. Mm. And it teaches kids to kind of like work with each other, live with each other. School Live in Japan over 15 was Japan travel tips. Mm -hmm. Still valid as they are. Mm. 100%. So, uh -huh, 100%. And also we were apparently super exhausted yeah, after we long knackered, recording. Apparently. We were exhausted, both of us. It just got very, very strange there. Yes, there's another exhausted episode coming up. We'll talk about <laughs> it when we get to it. <laughs> Next one, episode 16 and 17, we had a special guest mm. who was, and they call themselves an immigrant rapper. Immigrant rapper, Moment Jun. Mm. So immigrant from South Korea. And, and it went about up. also a discrimination in Japan. Yeah, so yeah, we actually tackled some heavy topics mm. there. Yeah, that was some serious stuff, really. Something that's underestimated that some people don't seem to realize is um, the, the Caucasians generally have like the very Hollywood image. Let's say like this, the Hollywood image, the blonde hair, the blonde, long, wavy hair. And, and, the, <laughs> and, and you know, it, it's a bit of a glamorous, positive image. Of course, mm. some people still get some, have some problems, but compared to what you could get somewhere else, you're still kind of on the safer side, apparently. While it doesn't seem to be the same for other Asians, like that's something I'm learning about. So maybe you can share something with us, June. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think you... You capture the, how do I say, the general perception the Japanese people have when it comes to the term foreigners, because obviously, you know, Westerners, I wouldn't even say Caucasians, but <laughs> Westerners are very easy to just like, you know, be spotted in the streets yeah, yeah. In, in Japan. Yeah. And they are not actually, how do I say, just when it comes to just like pure numbers, they're not the majority when it comes to foreigners or people with, uh, you know, different backgrounds living in Japan. It's obviously... Uh, Asians, mostly Chinese, Koreans, Vietnamese, people from Thailand, Indonesia, Malaysia. Yeah, those are the absolute majority when it comes to the real foreigners living in Japan. <coughs> and unfortunately or fortunately, their looks, their appearances, they're not that different from Japanese people. So when it comes to visibility, you know, they don't get the, they don't get a lot of representation. I feel. Yeah. And then yeah. episode number eighteen was the sweatiest. Summer! In the summertime where the weather is fine You it's can reach right up and touch in the sky When the weather's fine You got women, you got women on your mind Summertime in Japan? Summertime in Japan and how to survive it Because it's a bit warm. It's going to be wild. It's going to be wild. Next one, episode 19 and 20, we had a wonderful guest as well. And that was Shibuya Kaho. Oh, she was awesome, man. She yes. was great fun. Yes. We learned about her career in Japan mm -hmm. and the uh, life of an otaku. And yeah, we did otaku class doing. with her. <laughs> yes. She's awesome, man. Yeah, that was fantastic. What a legend. Cosplaying that happened when I became an actress mm -hmm. uh, in JV industry and uh, that was my first time to do like full makeup and like a full outfit. And I was like, okay, it's kind of cool. Mm -hmm. like, uh, once you become a talent, I guess you constantly have to take your selfies and photos, right? It's just like for your work. But 
I always just end up having the same kind of makeup and same kind of hairstyle. So I kind of got tired of looking at myself in the mirror. Oh, <laughs> so, oh, <laughs> right? breaking! Holy moly! Okay. Well, I think we girls uh, like okay. to change things up from yeah, time to time. I end up yeah. having changes. So I was like, "Oh, Cosby is actually great. Like I look totally oh. different, mm. and I love this kind of stuff." Yeah. yeah, I mean, like I've seen it on your Instagram. You got like a customized darling in the Franks uniform. That was ridiculously expensive. <laughs> <It> looks ridiculously <laughs> awesome, right? though. Yeah. Like, wow, custom yeah. made that thing. It, it, you know, that kind of pluck mm. suit kind of style, like a full body but, suit. But, but it looks amazing. there's no zipper. Uh, on a crutch so oh you, if you want to you know, go do your business in the bathroom then oh, you just have really? to you're gonna get <laughs> take the whole thing <laughs> off Holy and that moly. is a lot of work after that we got to episode 21 Japanese horror school horror school in general sounds like horror to me I mean my huh? high school was pretty much also horror me too I've... it was a daily nightmare <laughs> daily nightmare Next one, we had episode 22. Ah, Tai Ting came on. Yeah, I don't know if we had to say their name probably. I think that's I how think it's... Uh, uh, um, uh, t- Takashi just told us it was Chin, is how you pronounce it. I think so, yeah. yeah. How to be a famous singer in Japan. So she's not from Japan, mm. but she still releases stuff also in Japan. Okay, so you blow up on the internet in grade 10. It and was 16, that time. And 16. then you slap your dad and tell him you're not going to law school? Um, I just... I just put my guitar under my bed and I practiced it at midnight so that my dad uh, didn't hear the noise. Okay, wow. And then, yeah, it, it just everything is just a, a hobby. So I think a hobby didn't hurt anything, didn't hurt anyone. So I continue my study at school and then my hobby and then I upload it on YouTube. And then after a while, um, I really appreciate it that um, it get more attention than what I expected. My dad finally knew about that. And um, I just ignore what he said. And gradually he accepts that uh, I can, I could, I, c- I could not be a lawyer. I could not be a scientist or, or, or a doctor like my mom was. Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think I just made fate. I yeah. kind of feel sorry wow. for your dad. Poor, poor dad. <laughs> he thought he was setting you up for such a bright, well-educated future. Nah, none of that. Hidden guitar, midnight jam sessions. Nuts to you, dad. She's Vietnamese. So any Vietnamese speaking listeners, we think her name's Tai Chin. You could tell Please us if it's not. <laughs> tell us how to pronounce her name. I'm As so you can sorry. see, we're both Vietnamese speaking professionals. Uh, what, so what, we should be able to nail it. I don't have any idea where it's going. Episode 23 and 24, we had absolute now superstar, superstar. in Sweden, mm. Andy Goat. Andy Goat, the Andy Goat. That was the Andy Goat. Yes, good and job, my buddy Andy Goat. Yeah, we talked about Andy Go. So Andy Go kind of, they started first with like their Swedish bands and then made it here mm-hmm. in Japan and just worked their Cheating way up. And whatnot. Like my two like guiding philosophies. Uh, number one is like, I always like dive in the deep end, even if I'm bad and I'm very not shy at showing off doing stuff. Cause I just like doing it. I, I've released songs that have been terrible, mixes that have been terrible, videos that have sucked, makeup looks that have sucked, but I'd rather start bad and then gradually improve and constantly do stuff than like, wait and wait and wait until you're maybe good one day because mm. at that point life will have passed you by already oh, that's the process of learning yeah. anything as a human being yeah you know it's like the iterator versus the perfectionist mm. you know and I, I always want to be the iterator but more than that and not to get morbid now but like remembering that i'll be dead soon is it, it helps me wake up in the morning it's such a positive force for me because oh, it makes me fearless mm. it makes me un afraid to be myself uh, uh, and so unapologetically so because I'll be dead soon, we'll all be dead soon and in a hundred years nobody will remember any of this anyway so live as your, your life as good as you can while you still can because you're alive now, so make the most out of it. And that really helps me push forward. And we're going I'm going to mes- mention where they are now Please. in the next time, because they come one more time mm-hmm. on our podcast, because a lot of things changed in their lives. Things life. change, that's right. Things Quickly. change for the amazingness better. I was so. on the phone with him like two days ago as well. Ha, awesome. Fantastic. All, all these guests are all my mates. All the guests. <laughs> awesome. Next one, episode 25, was Tokyo versus Osaka, mm-hmm. or the regional rivalry. Regional rivalry. Brrr. 
get involved with that if you mm-hmm. want to know a little about the old uh, interstate competition in Japan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. In Tokyo, it's like uh, Australia and I think like Germany too, where you know, the bus driver's obviously at the front of the bus and mm-hmm. he opens the doors at the front of the bus and you get on at the front of the bus, but then you get off the bus at the back of yeah, the bus. Yeah, so you pay when you go in. Beep, beep. <clears throat> yeah. But to, they are also guys the different oh, way. You get in on the back that. of the door, and then you pay as you leave on the front door. It's so, everything's topsy turvy. You get in at the back, so it's so you've got these two options: do I mm-hmm. turn left or turn right? Once you get on, but then you have to go out the front, and then you pay on your way out instead of on your way in. It's yeah, it's also, very trust centric, isn't it? Because in my country, people would just do the ride and then run. If you didn't have to pay until the end, you know? Oh, but you how would you run? Well, I actually got really, really told <laughs> of by a, um, I think that's a Kansai thing, so for the whole area there, that you actually have to to go on, to leave from the front and not from the back. Because I remember I went in, in Kyoto, I went on the bus, and it was very crowded. And it, with, with luggage, it's really hard to leave at the front if you're sitting on the back, right? Uh, so course. I tried to, and, then, and the door just opened on my left. So I'm like, oh, I'm just going to go uh, out uh, here. Uh, 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 and oh my God, like I got this, this thing of shame where, where the bus driver, he grabbed onto the microphone and was like, you better pay. In front of really? everyone, I'm like, oh my god, super center, super center, super center, super center, super center. <laughs> like, oh, wow. There was no other way for me to pay. All right. But to then go on the outside, walk back into the bus, tap my suka, and then leave. But everyone on the bus knew that I'd left the bus through the wrong door. Yeah, you would have How been dare a, me. You would have been an unpopular Dirty foreigner in her tent. pink dresses. Episode 26. 26, the Combini. Yeah. The Combini episode. The, the Combini magic. is a whole adventure unto itself. So go listen to that if you want to know all about the freaking convenience Absolute store. Absolute A lot magic. happens there. Mate. Ready, go. Come on. It is the Family Mart Family Mart, yes. You cannot enter a Family Mart without this tune playing. It will be in your head. You would go insane if you worked at one of those. You really would. I, there's been some really cool like uh, covers online yeah. of the Lawson like an EDM. And, and the Family Mart, <laughs> like, EDM like the tunes that play when you come in. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty cool. Yes. Now, next one, we actually have a esports pro gamer talking about becoming a super esports star in Japan. Yeah. And that was Mag. Mag, this dude, Mag. Aussie, wasn't he? Yes. Aussie fellow, Mag yes. came on. Yes, yes, Very yes. interesting. He used to be a professional gymnast and now he's a professional gamer. I used to also be a gymnast. Mm. I competed Good. in gymnastics. Wow. You competed? Yes. Good. Um, <laughs> yeah, so while I was competing, I also had a part time job in coaching children gymnastics mm. and studying mm. university. So, you know, I wanted some good rest time. What would I do? Play video games. Mm. Um, I really Your loved... rest time became so competitive now. Oh, right. I mean, yeah. so because, awesome. you know, I compete in gymnastics, I've always been a very competitive person. Mm-hmm. So even when playing games, I'd always want to be the number one ranked person on the, you know, playing with the best people as well. And I played uh, Rainbow Six from 2015 for a few years uh, because there wasn't actual any competitions for a few years. But I found myself... Uh, playing for the second best team in Australia in a competition, um, but then eventually joined the best team. Hmm. So we dominated Australia, right? Best team in Australia, which landed our first international tournament. Um, because you know, there's uh, teams that come from Asia, Europe, North America um, every year for this big um, tournament called the Invitational. Yeah. Okay. So because uh, we actually did very well. On that first international tournament we went to, um, we got uh, a message from Ubisoft. They said, you know, look, really big team wants to pick you guys up. We can't say who it is yet, uh, but if you want, we can get them and you in a, in a meeting and see what happens. Mm-hmm. And it was fanatic. So those are two very interesting careers. And he still works out like crazy, though. Yeah, yeah. He was doing backflips in the studio. You remember yep, that? Yep, I remember yeah, yeah. he did backflips. I should release that. I think we have a video. You got of a that video of that. I think we have a video. That of dude that. was awesome. Check with him whether we can keep that. I hope he's doing well. I hope you're doing well, Mag. I hope you're winning esports things. Yeah. Ah. That was amazing. Yeah. Next one, that was a seasonal one. Episode 29 was Japan's unique Halloween. Unique Halloween. <laughs> oh, boy. The word unique applies to Japan in many contexts, doesn't it? I mean, that's the episode where I got minion shamed. 
you get minion shamed? Yeah, by you. You what? minion shamed me. Tell me what I did. Oh, I said I'm not a big fan of the minions. And, and I shamed you, you, did you I? You minion shamed me. Oh, did I? Yep. Well, that's what you get for not liking the minions. Yeah, I guess apparently that's what I get for not liking the minions. Exactly. Why don't you like the minions? They're, they're wonderful. They're, they're hilarious. I just wanted people to dress as something more, you know, Japanese-centered. Oh, costume Mario, of the minions. Pikachu. Well, last one in the last episode when we spoke about graduation. And there were dudes cosplayed as minions for graduation. Yeah. Minions everywhere. And they love the minions. You know that I, I, I purposely on the last episode did not mention those minions for graduation so I wouldn't get you are so anti-minion we could just make a new episode about Kathy Cat's yeah, hatred should, of I the should, minions I should not have we said might anything. get sued by Paramount no, my, I should have not said anything um, it's my least favorite it's Paramount attraction. I love the minions just so we're clear it's fine Leap he loves the minions this. he gets all you can give them all the love just oh, let well. me back into Super Nintendo world <laughs> um now next one is how to date a Japanese person like a boy or mm-hmm. a girl mm-hmm. how mm-hmm. to date japanese people that was 20 episode 30. 30 sorry that was episode 30 episode 30 with valentine's day it's not oh, the yeah. guy who will ask the girl out here in japan it's the girls who will make or give some sort of chocolate to the guy they like and then he has an entire month to decide whether he's going to give her something back or not <sighs> yeah, on the japanese. white day and once later was on the 14th of march so again it's like the girls can try and appeal <laughs> I'm like oh look here's chocolate here's my heart and chocolate but the the guys if if the guys don't actually actively do something then it just fizzles out I guess and after that we had thirty one and thirty two with our mate Peachy Milky Peach Milky Peach Milky sorry I stuck a Y in there unneedingly <laughs> Peach Milky I'm sorry Pe- Peach Milky feeling very peachy having mm. a good time with us talking about how to be a beautiful cosplayer Cosplay. inside and out and the profession of modeling in Japan the main thing is to have a passion for it. So I think that, especially with cosplay specifically, I think that cosplaying characters that you want to cosplay um, and things that you're passionate about, people are going to see that when you post it. They're going to, I think that you can inherently read when someone doesn't care versus when Mm -hmm. they do care. So I think that, um, like, and also when you start out, I think this is very important, um, cosplay modeling and pretty much with any kind of content creation is you kind of have to give yourself some time to suck You kind of have to (laughs) suck for a little while because that is part of the process. I think like all of us here have like content that we made years and years ago. We look back and look a little bit cringe. Oh, look at what I did yesterday. I'm like, (laughs) but if you're not cringing at what you did before, then you're not growing. Good point. I like that again. So so even if it's not perfect to the like the content that you're seeing online, like even if you're not meeting that expectation yet, you need to give yourself that room to grow. I think it's very, very important. And even if you think that it's not great, like just post it anyway. Just go for it. Like just grow from there and you'll learn with every new cosplay, every new experience. If you're not cringing, you're not growing. I like oh, that. Very nice. That is very a nice. really good quote. Yeah. <laughs> a lot. Um, I love her accent, by the way. Listening to her talk was like, oh, it was glorious on my ears. It was like, <laughs> yeah, the Irish. This is yeah, wicked. It's very good. It's very nice. Next, episode 33, tips to learn foreign languages or how to learn Japanese. Mm-hmm. I wasn't so very good that at that. Kept yeah, department, like frankly. That, definitely. <laughs> For me, ongoing is kanji in Japanese. Okay. So okay. it's less speaking because obviously I speak a lot. I do street interviews and stuff, but it's mainly the kanji, which you guys probably know this, but I'm going to mention it again. Japan has three alphabets. Two are pretty easy to learn. Literally, you just sit down and then you have them. But the third one comes from China the kanjis and those ones are in my opinion the worst thing about japanese language so you know what i actually quite like the kanji the what what upsets Woo! me here's like here's what's up Woo! i like i like writing the kanji because it's, well, because it's kind of like drawing pictures, isn't it? Okay, I was going to say that. There's some some sadistic. No, because when you when you're learning them, you just want to repeat them a bunch of times to get okay. your muscle memory with your hand, right? So it's okay. kind of like drawing pictures, right? Mm-hmm. It's just you know. Thirty four and thirty five was where you popped my eardrums. So yes, yeah, sorry. Thirty four was the winter in Japan. We all know about Lady Beard's hatred of the winter. You hate the minions. I hate the winter. Oh yeah. It's just so yeah. So there was a probably fifteen minute rant about how much you hate oh, winter the at the start of that episode. Winter. Thank goodness that's <laughs> coming to an end, man. <laughs> just I've hit an wild. age when winter arrives and I'm just fat now. Like there's just no way to combat it. Doesn't matter how hard I diet or it's how so hard cold. I work out. It's just I'm fat for the next two or three it's months, and that's just what to it shed is. It. Yep. <sighs> So those are winter in Japan, and then winter. we did 36. We wrapped up 2022. Yep. Wrap up. Wrap up. 
Goodbye, 2022. And we started the new year with Karin Kagami, who is a fresh voice oh, yeah. actress from Japan. She was awesome. She was adorable, I wasn't she? I loved her. She was a fan of mine, which I'm like, oh, yeah. I love. Happy around no Akashi Maho des. So she, Haneyama Uda des. Oh, it's like two people sitting here in the study. I like Urara. Can you give us some more Urara? She's adorable. Can you give us a little oh. bit of like bust out some happy birthday to you as Urara? Happy birthday. Yeah, yeah. Take a request. Our lady bit yeah. is bringing in the request. Of, here. <laughs> sing a bit of Oh Holy Night as Urara. Is that a birthday song? Yeah, can you bust out some happy birthday? Or, or, or like, or like a else? birthday message. How about a birthday message? Oh, a birthday message. Singing to something oh, else oh, all oh, over again. Right. Can, can you say happy birthday to our snowman Christopherson? Wait a please? second. We, we are releasing this one in December. So yeah, how about some Christmas readings? Ah, Christmas? Ah, so, eto, we, <laughs> we, can I sing? Please! Oh, sure, if you want to. <laughs> yeah, okay. sure. As Urara. <laughs> We wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, we wish you a Merry Christmas, and a Happy New Year! Yes! Kawaii Christmas! I love it! Kawaii okay, Christmas tell, edition! Sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm so out. sorry. Now, Lady Bird had a request. Could you do the DJ voice? How would the DJ oh, yeah, do it? Would her. she go like, Dick, you know, Christmas! Drop the beat! Right. Everyone, <laughs> raise your hands! How would she do it? Um, um I think she will do it, like... Merry Christmas! We wish you a Merry Christmas! Yes! We wish you reason. a Merry Christmas! We wish you a Merry Christmas! And a Happy New Year! Yes! Oh, I want, her to, I want her to do well. I want her to succeed at this. And her manager was my mate, The Sugar Show. Remember that? The Sugar Show? Yeah, yeah. His name is Sugar. That's his ah. surname. So, I, yeah, he and I are already mates because we already did stuff together before. I call him The Sugar Show. Oh, no. Yeah, yeah. I see. Okay, yeah. Sugar Show. Yeah, so it was about how to become an anime voice actor, mm -hmm. maybe and even in Japan. Speaking about anime, episodes 39 and 40, where our mate Henry Thurlow spoke about animating for anime in Japan. Oh, yeah, and the truths. that Some of those were oh. harsh. I will not forget some of the things he talked about. What did he talk about? Oh, <laughs> there are a couple of things he also talked about behind camera that will also I will not forget. Oh. But just how hard it was for him because animators are so notoriously paid so yeah. little and how hard it was for him to actually sustain his visa because he was just paid so little. Is there an element involved when kind of the studio heads and so forth consider it a test of your dedication? So how many, you know, are you willing to endure five years of Well, training? I think so. I, I mean, I think the... I think, th yeah, that that probably is the mind frame, and and I'm torn on it philosophically, mm -hmm. right? Because I actually do think being put in kind of a dire situation <laughs> does mm -hmm. kind of propel you forward, right? It's motivating. I, I have to say, I look back on the time as an in between animator, really torn because mm -hmm. at on the one hand, I recognize like man. That that those hours and that pay was so low, like that they were kind of taking advantage of me. On the other hand. I'm actually super thankful I did that for eight mm -hmm. months because it was eight months of real harsh. It was like my uh, my training saga, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But it's but it really was because I, I left a totally different artist than I did at the mm -hmm. beginning of the eight months. Mm -hmm. That was such intense, brutal training for eight months. But I got to say, like, I leveled up a million times. Mm -hmm. So I'm torn because I do think in a competitive field, this isn't a nine to five type job, right? No, um, those no. type of jobs, I, I believe need more benefits and I believe need, et cetera, et cetera. I, 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 I want them to get better contracts and all of that stuff, right, for, for their time. When it comes to a competitive type job, though, it's a little bit more difficult because everyone around you is like, it's more of like a, it's like an Olympic athlete kind of thing, right? Mm. Like you can't tell the Olympic athlete like, okay, it's 9 p.m., go home, no more, mm. you know, stretching today. Mm. No, like this is my life. I want to be here for as long as it takes to be the best. That's the mindset of most of the animators. So I don't like the idea of actually kicking people out. If people want to go through that training saga and be like, I want to work crazy hard for eight months, 10 months, whatever, multiple years, because this is what's going to bring the best artist out of me. I think they should be able to do that. They shouldn't be kicked out. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, 
But but at the same time, it is a job. You can't take advantage of people, you know, <laughs> uh, j j just because some people in the studio might be like, work me to the bone, uh, make me the best. Doesn't mean you can set that as like a work standard. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? So it, but it is a little bit more difficult than than just being like pay better and we're done. Mm. It's a competitive job and there's going to be people that want to actively come in on that Saturday or stay those extra hours to be the best faster. Isn't wow. something how for that's Japan. Just still having that passion of saying I'll still want to do this still stick it out. despite those uh, hurdles you had to jump over. But isn't it interesting fire. how Japan, a nation that is renowned for its animation, mm. just treats animators like rubbish. It's like a popular export and it's not getting treated with the same love it should nice. be treated. There's a lot of money getting pumped into cool Japan, like projects, anything that promotes Japan, like they pump a lot of money into industry. I think there needs to be a little bit more money pumped into the anime industry because not recently a lot gets dispatched to other countries because it's even cheaper to make it there. It's not good for the Japanese anime I'm industry. sure money's going into the industry. It's just not going to the animators. Yeah, yeah. that's sure also a problem. There's, you know, so some things, some wheels are turning that. behind the scenes, I'm mm, sure. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Next one, we have rail transport S in Japan. Speaking of wheels Because my program is called... Japan Railway Joysticks. Ah, I think if we should have had a counter of how many times you got <laughs> Japan Railway Journal wrong. Japan... Railway, <laughs> Jeremiah. Oh my God. Yamanote line, which is like the heart mm. of Tokyo. It's a circular line that was for two days stopped at the beginning of the year. That messed me up. I was going to go meet my buddies. That uh, messed me up. Yeah, yeah, that was probably not happening then, was no, it? No, I met my buddies. I just had to go via different route. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, there's the Yamanote is the circular line, which just never stops going all day. Mm -hmm. yeah? From like five in the morning till like midnight. Go one goes this way, the other goes that way, and mm -hmm. they just keep on going all day. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a, a really fascinating part. Like the Yamanote line, you will, if you come to Tokyo, you will ride the Yamanote. <laughs> there mm. is no question about that. It connects all the most important points in Tokyo, mm -hmm. the most known points, and, and the big stations, Ikebukuro mm -hmm. and Shinjuku and, and Shibuya are also, all three of those are actually on, on the, Yamanote the Yamanote line, line. as well. So yeah, we, <laughs> we, we talked a little bit about railway transport in Japan, and then episode 42. Oh, uh, we spoke about uh, tips for learning Japanese. Get better at learning Japanese. Right? We're giving you two resources now. you got no excuse. Exactly. Episode uh, uh, 42, uh, tips to learn Japanese. Uh, then episode 43. Uh, it was all about Lady Beard. Hello. And 44. You were kind of the star of that episode. Yep, you got yep, to yep. actually find out some uh, bits of your past. Yep. You shared things that I've never heard you actually share anywhere else uh, online. That and was, Yeah, that was put down the potato chips, pick up your life. That's what that episode that was. That was really, really good. <laughs> really like that episode. Yeah, thank you. It's very kind of you. I was fat and not good at school. So therefore, basically got bullied endlessly. That was that oh, was my no! main memory of childhood, no! just getting bullied for being fat and oh, stupid. No! I'm also a younger sibling, so I was bullied at home as well. Oh, bullied at home, no! bullied at school, just bullied by strangers. Just bullied constantly. That's what Lady Bear's childhood was. So I have the feeling that maybe then working out was like the thing that turned everything around for you? Yeah, um, once I got to about 13, 14, and I could start taking responsibility for my own decisions. That's when, firstly, the thyroid kind of got sorted out. I was, I was on medication for that as well. So that guy kind of sorted out. Mm -hmm. And also, I was able to take responsibility for my own decisions. So I, I specifically remember the day when I went to get a eat a packet of potato chips or something. And I remember looking at him going, no, nah, that's going to make me fatter than I have to be. I'm not going to eat that. I specifically remember when I was like 13 or something, mm -hmm. the day I made the decision. And the, when I was able to take responsibility for my own decisions, you know. Mm. So... <clears throat> That changed everything because then I was like, well, I've been tortured my whole life of being fat. I don't like being fat. I don't want to be fat anymore. Now that I can, you know, kind of take control of my life a bit more, I'm going to not do the things that apparently lead you to being fat. So I didn't. And I'm going to do the things that lead you to not being fat, like working out. And so I did. And so, oh. yeah. And the thyroid as well. The thyroid was really, that was what well, kept me fat during childhood. Right, so you rose above. You rose above. You started putting above. down the potato yes. chips. Yes. Picking Put it down. up your life. Put down the crisps. Exactly. Put I like that. The Put down the potato crisps. chips. Pick up your life. Exactly. That's excellent slogan. Can we make that the slogan of this episode? Put, Put down, down the, the potato, potato chips. chips. Pick, Pick up, up your, your life. life. Then after that, it was our Tokyo Travel Guide. Mm, that's episode right. 45. So mm -hmm. if you're coming actually to travel to Tokyo, that's your episode. Mm -hmm. All for Check you. A bit of Tokyo local knowledge. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> then we have 46, a bit of kawaii culture in Japan. Well, what's a bit of like, what is kawaii? What is kawaii culture? What is cute? Something both of us know some things about. Yeah, because we are totes kawaii. Oi, oh, kawaii my. as, brah. Yeah, hey. <laughs> exactly. Next one, we had a guest again. Hey, Hideaki Kobayashi, my mate. How did an ordinary cross-dressing office worker became popular? Or oh, the name that people know him as most in Japan, Seirafuku Oji-san, mm. the sailor uniform wearing old, old guy. Fella. Old, old fella. Old fella. fella. Even when I was a kid, I like a cute outfit. I, I was envious <laughs> to girls because they they can wear like a hair, hair accessory or something, things like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Exhibit A. Uh-huh. I'm working it right now mm. in case you guys could just, uh, imagine so, me, I'm working so, it right now. Mm. So e- even in the elementary school class, I uh, get the uh, girls' uh, uh, accessory and put it o- on myself. Uh. And they laughed at me at first, but uh, in an hour, they get used to it. <laughs> so I-, I like that. And I-, I was wearing that accessory the whole day. Thing like that. So I want to be cute, mm-hmm. so even in childhood. So uh, so I secretly wear women's uh, underwear or some, something when I was in high school or college, but uh, just I wanted to, to look cute. Uh, that doesn't mean that uh, it's something to show to everybody. Uh, oh. mm. So but, you would like dress cute even where people weren't seeing it. Mm. So it wasn't. It was just for yourself, for your phone, whole uh, uh, enjoyment. Uh, uh, just, I was enjoying uh, wearing women's outfit alone. Mm, secretly, mm. Mm. he's the awesome. Sailor, Sailor Oji San, the what old guy a legend. In the it's, school uniform grandpa. He's like a little cat. His aura he's awesome, is so it? it's like a cuddly cat. He's yeah, he's a, yeah, he's a great dude. He's a <laughs> wonderful one to hang out cuddly with. Cuddly cat here. Next one. Um, why do Japanese people live so long? So some health tips. Mm, clearly, the answer is magic. <laughs> that too, witchcraft, absolutely witchcraft. Next, forty nine fifty. My mate, no, he where well, he didn't start out as my mate because uh, now, he's, now, he's, now he's everyone becomes now, ladies. Now we love mate. him. Uh, our mate Nicholas Pettis. Nicholas he was Pettis, he K one champion. K one champion. In two thousand two, I kick a guy on the shin and I snap my own shin in half. Oh, oh no, God. that's what uh, Addison Silver did, huh? Yeah, same thing. Same oh thing. mate, that's like the worst injury available in martial arts. I'll tell you, you why it's the worst. Videos of this in slow motion. <laughs> and there'll be there'll be a kick, and as the as the legs coming back, you see the shin go bleh, 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 oh, yeah, no, bleh, that oh, rubber no. around. It's the rubber, rubber. Oh, mate, I remember awful. seeing that and putting my foot down on the mat, and this, the shin started going oh. that way. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, yeah. anyway, this is where I became stupid famous for something else I did in Japan. <laughs> as I'm lying there on the mat, I realized that that snapped my. It, li- it sounded like this. Oh, oh no! Right? And then I'm lying on the mat, and I'm like. Oreta, oreta. In Japanese, I'm mm. saying, I broke my leg, I broke my leg. <laughs> <laughs> the referee comes over to me and says, don't talk. And I was like, no, no, I broke my leg. I actually Aww. broke my leg. And some of my friends are like, oh, dude, you're so Japanese. Like in the most traumatic moment of your life, you're speaking in Japanese. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's actually a yeah. good point. Yeah. Oreta, I broke it, I broke it. Yeah. In it's interesting to me that you're not going, ah! <laughs> you have words to I say. I was completely moment. like, get the doctor, I broke my leg. Yeah, uh, so it took me, yeah, it took me five years five or six years before I got to fight against Kim Jong. And right. afterwards, he invited us to be on his show. On his show, Junk, Junk Food Japan. Good. Yeah, we, That was wicked. That was we good. ate some burgers. And sweets, tons of sweets. Yeah, tons of sweets. That was wicked. We went to that Goody Goody Burger. That was delicious. That was good stuff. Someone got yelled at by the owner of that shop because they mentioned a vegetable. Oh, yeah, that was me. I was like, do you have like avocado? He's like, no, I have no He's like, I despise vegetables. How dare you? I hate vegetables. I'm like, okay, I just just take this burger here and things. I'll be over here. All right. (laughs) Discrimination against the vegetables. I got into trouble for asking for avocado on my burger. so funny. Yeah, Nick Pettis, he was awesome. Then we had uh, 51, 52. We had, we made it to the 50 mark with Mr. Pettis, Yeah, we have now crossed the 50 mark. uh, Mm. Milestone. Then we had Katsura Sunshine on for 51, 52. That was a band, Japanese comedy or Rakugo mm, as Rakugo. well. So it's like telling stories as well. That was interesting. Different from the aforementioned Japanese comedy. like Different type of comedy. Yeah, different. It's like Japanese storytelling, stand-up Storytelling, sort of, yeah, stand-up. stand-up-ish. It's interesting because you would think, even as a Canadian, oh. when I go to UK and a London comic is talking, like maybe one third of it, I don't know what's funny. So <laughs> even in the same language of English. So here we've got a an ancient Japanese storytelling that's in maybe old Osaka dialect. Yeah, right. 
you're taking it in English and French and you're taking it to like New York, London, all these places with different sensibilities. But I think because it's hundreds of year old stories that have, I mean, Edo period Japanese people and today modern Japanese people don't have the same heads either. So yeah. because it's crossed the time, the, the sort of the borders of time, then it can cross the borders of borders in, in, in a way. It can cross language barriers. I don't change a thing in translation. I don't adapt at all for the audience. It's all right. it's all straight translation. And that's really satisfying in New, to go to New York and to do these routines exactly the way you do them in Japanese and have New Yorkers laugh at the exact same things that Japanese people laugh here. That's real interesting. I got to tell you, I got to tell you, one of the great things about doing this podcast is you meet all these interesting people. Mm. And you learn about, like I learned a bunch of stuff about Japan that I had no idea about before. Like I didn't know what Rakugo was. I mm. think I could seen it in passing and I've been told of it, but I didn't have any idea what it actually was, you know? What I also find really interesting is, especially with um, some of the people we had, legends we had to speak to, they were kind of the first ones to break into their mm -hmm. industries. Mm -hmm. In their, like, literally the first ones. Lots of the people you're on the podcast are actually pioneers mm, yeah. at what they are doing. Yep. And that is just a good indication of how hard they had it. They crawled so you guys can fly. Mm -hmm. So you better check out those episodes uh -huh. if you're interested of making a big in Japan. Yeah, and a lot of those guys as well. There are, a lot of them are slightly older, and they came in pre-internet and everything. They came in the '80s and whatnot. When I you think had the to, camera cuts it are sunshine for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. When you had to, you know, you couldn't send someone a tweet like you can now. Yeah, and yeah. it's just like how Katsura Sunshine broke into that Japan like dominated is not even the right word like uh, Japanese people only society and how we broke into that record that was very inspiring yeah. just like how to become a dishi like and we first like serve your master that kind of, it was so inspiring something else 53 and 54 was Japanese wordplay and uh -huh. tips for moving to Japan uh -huh. anything to make get you covered when you come over here. Mm -hmm. So we've been laying down a lot of groundwork for you guys. Yeah, I gotta say, there's a lot of information provided in this podcast mm. that uh, you Japanophiles should get involved in. There's a lot here. Next one, we had a superhero in a show. Hey, my mate Sean Nichols. Hey. <laughs> He's Everyone's awesome. your mate. But he actually legit is our mate now, isn't he? He's, He's awesome. our mate He now. took us on that boat. He took that us on a wicked. boat ride. It was fantastic. That was awesome. Nick, oh yeah, I was going to say Nick Pettis. Sean Nichols <laughs> took us on, because they both got Nick, Nick Pettis All and Sean Nicks. Nichols. Yep. He took All us on mates. a boat. We spoke about that in a later episode. We're took on us a on the boat. boat. We were on a boat. Fantastic. Sean Nichols is, of course, our mate, and I voiced him in Ultraman Max. He was wicked. Yep. Yeah. You became the voice actor of yeah. him. Yep. Amazing. I was listening to that episode again last night, actually. Oh, that's yeah, good. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the most memorable moments for that show were not on the set, but seeing the reaction of people when they met me. Oh. To see how much Ultraman really means to some of these people. Oh. Um, the fan, I mean, I love the fans. They are, I mean, they were, they're way bigger fans than I ever was. And it's just amazing. They, they're so nice. They're so kind. And now that Ultraman is like expanding around the world, and there's the internet, all these people can now contact me. So like on, on Instagram, I'll get messages and I try really hard to write back to everybody um, because some places in the world, like literally right now, Ultraman Max is the latest Ultraman show that's uh, on the air. Oh, is that really? Yeah. Oh, that was 20 years old, really? So in, in Indonesia, yes. uh, last year, Ultraman Max was on the air. So oh, I am nice. literally on this... TV show or a news show from Indonesia streamed and people are talking to me like I'm like seeing me for the first time and it's, really, awesome. it's, yeah, it's really cool. So, so I think, I think, you know, and, and there's a little bit of a burden slash responsibility yes, yep, yep, yep. to living up to the, you know, the, wow, the, whatever you call it. It's, it's just such an honor to be Ultraman and uh, to be on the show. And you just want to make sure that all those kids who are the fans you know and i was on a kid's show before that so i had a little bit of that and you know not being like drunk and yeah stripping off my clothes yes. and falling like, ah! you know uh so i tried really hard not to do that because i tended not to soak out i don't do that <laughs> at all but anyway yeah so that that That's was why you're doing at the nba all day yeah. well, <laughs> episode 57 and 58 oh, the life of Kathy Cat. Hey, They're yours all truly. About Kathy Cat. We went through student student life and encounters with Japan and then how Kathy Cat does what she loves. And how I became where I, who or what I am right um, now. At the hardest time there, I worked five jobs. Wow. I would get up in the morning, go to a school for like rich 
girl girls. It was like a rich girl school. Okay. I would go there and prepare in the morning before class starts. So that would start around like six, seven. Mm. I would prepare them for class. And then around eight, they would go into class. <laughs> then from eight, I would go into the kitchen. That was my second job that I started then. It was a different company. And then because I said, I need more money. Uh, so I went uh, into the kitchen and helped and cut vegetables nah. and, you know, whatever, made, made bread and all those kind of things. So cooked there. Then after that, I would serve it to the kids. Then I would clean everything up again and put away the tables. And I'd have about 10 minutes before then the next kids would come out of school. So again, back to the first job, but second round of the first job. So <laughs> kind of the third job where I would then again help the kids after school to make sure that the kids were like uh, taken care of. You help them with your homework. And once they get picked up my mom and dad, I would go on my bicycle and cycle all the way over to the cinema where I do the closing on the cinema, which finishes around 12 at night. So I would like dish out popcorn, sell cinema tickets. And then it was still tough to pay the rent with I all didn't of realize, that. I didn't ever realize you were such a um, nose to the grindstone, laboriously um, laving, laving? Laboriously <laughs> working. Um Powerhouse, Kathy Cat. I really wanted to make it. Like I thought, like if I, if you're gonna do it, you really gotta put yourself into it. Mm. And I wanted to make it. I wanted to get Ooh. that degree. So beside of that time, I also was studying, right? So I must say, then at that point in time, it, it was tough. Yeah. That grind was tough. I felt terrible when we or after we recorded that because I was jet lagging out the banana. Oh yeah, you were barely and, awake, dude. It was. I was just in a haze for those recordings. I'm so you're sorry. Like, What's the next thing? Yeah, what, I'm so what did sorry. You, what inspired you. I felt so guilty because it's the, you're all about you and I just wasn't able to contribute on any level. I'm so sorry. You were so tired though. So you were like, we had, we had like the day before we come back from Brazil or something. Came back so it was from all, and it was, I think show. also it was the first international show after the great plague. So therefore we were going, like I hadn't done the international traveling of the jet lag mm -hmm. for a long time. So I, I was like, oh, I was you were shock half to the asleep. Yeah, yeah so you sorry. were half asleep. No worries. Terrible. But, but you know. fitting with that, we had the next episode after that 59 was Japanese makeup styles oh. and beauty standards. Mm -hmm. I have no standards <laughs> of beauty or anything else. Next one, a very special episode, episode 60. The one, the only, Kathy Cat, tell everybody, tell everybody. The most famous foreigner in Japan. The Mac Daddy of famous foreigners in Japan. Who Bob. is he? Sap. Bob Sap. You came to Japan, but K1 is a kickboxing establishment. It's not pro wrestling. K, K, K1 was the then, um, what they call would be stand up striking. So you basically could do, uh, think of it as Muay Thai or uh, striking with your fists with boxing gloves on, mm -hmm. knees, fists, and high kicks allowed and low kicks allowed. So it was considered the most brutal of all stand up uh, uh, striking uh, competitions. I also fought within the Pride organization, which was then and is currently still always world renowned known for being the most uh, brutal and most craziest of all fighting competitions out there. So mm. um, no, nobody is, uh, you know, every, everyone always says pride never dies. So, you know, no one has ever um, beaten the records that we have set forth back then. They still have not been beaten now. So it's, it's, it's pretty good stuff. I'll just fill Kathy in because as you can see from her delightful demeanor, <laughs> she's not really into fighting all that much. So I better let her know. Yeah. Um, K1 is a very, very famous uh, kickboxing competition. And so that's this is where, and WCW, where Bob started his uh, fight career, that's a very, formerly a very famous uh, pro wrestling uh, pro club in yep. America. That's right. Um, and then Pride, uh, Pride FC was the precursor to the UFC, MMA. I suppose. It's MMA, mixed martial arts. And mm -hmm. at the start of Pride, there were literally no rules. So oh. you could kick men in the groin. You could you could go for the eyes. Yeah, could you do We could do some, some do, I don't think we could kick them in the groin, but we could do stuff like uh, some that then knee, knee kicks, north, south, knees, yeah. uh, head stomp, soccer kicks. Then they would yeah. later change some of the rules. But still... The, the 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 rounds and the, and the way we fought is still today considered the most brutal and the most the most exciting ever. And now I know him for sure because in episode one, Kathy Cat. What no? In episode one. What what happened in episode one? When I mentioned the legendary what? Mac Daddy, a famous foreigner uh -huh. in Japan, mm -hmm. Bob Sapp, Kathy Cat's reaction was, "Who's that? <laughs> Who is that?" 
Just so that you know, by the way, when we did the Bob episode, after our episode with Bob was uh, published, they got picked up by Japanese media. Did. Bob Sapp got interviewed on this podcast. What? Big write up in Japanese because Bob Sapp is super famous. You might say he is the, the Mac most- Daddy. Oh, okay. famous foreigners. Most Japan. famous. <laughs> I don't know what a Mac Daddy is. It sounds like macaron and cheese. Oh, all right. Well, know. now you don't know two Bob Sap oriented things that I've told you. <laughs> all right. Exactly. We'll just move on. But that on. was interesting. That was a life um, live stream call kind of thing, how we did it, because he yeah, doesn't live in Japan yeah, right now. Yeah, that's right. Um, from his, uh, his home overseas. Uh, what a legend, by the way, Bob. What a legend. Mm, what a very legend. Interesting. A great episode. Next um, one. Yeah, just sorry, just one second. He's yes. the most famous the of the foreigners of Japan. The so one. Just, if you want to know about the life, go pay attention to Bob. Next one. Episode 61, 62. Mm-hmm. Tekla. Tekla. Hey, Tekla Toxic Spider. So we're staying with the wrestling, but we're actually mm-hmm. going to Josh Puro wrestle. So mm-hmm. the girls. So I did one death match and then and then they asked me if I wanted to do this like electric, uh, you know, exploding bat thing. Mm. And I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, they was like, uh, come on, please. A week later. <laughs> come know? on. And I was like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then three weeks later, they was like, I think about it one more time. I was like, you know what? Okay, I'm going to do it. Oh. oh. <laughs> yeah. I was like, I don't know what happened, but I was, I think I was bored. I was like, you know what? Let's just try it. What could possibly go wrong? What could possibly, yeah. possibly, what could possibly go, go shadowing? wrong? Fame so, last words. <laughs> long right. story short, um, we had the match and it was it was fun because it was different, you know, and it was a different environment. It's a lot more like rough and oh, the, the fans oh. it, like they, they wanna see that violence, you know. Oh. So uh we were we were getting into it, but for some reason I was I was gonna hit my opponent with the bat. I had I'd managed to hit the button, right? Mm-hmm. And uh and the the bat exploded at a at a weird timing, oh. you know? Oh, so no. yeah, so um it got her. No, it was the other way around. She tried to hit me, and then and then it was I was fine, kind of. It got got me in the in in the foot or something. It was not too bad, but it got her like like she had like it was all black here, you know. Oh, but she, she was the one yeah, who was a little bit exact exactly, yeah. so and and then a bit too it, it, different it, it, timing. exactly like like in the in the spot where it could possibly be a little bit dangerous, right? And I was mm. so surprised, and like I just I just you know fell to the ground, and but I fell on. The bat, <gasps> and the no. bat was still uh, hot too. Oh, no. And then, and then she pinned me on the bat. You know, oh, you have, no. you've got like the no, barbed no, no, wire no, no, in your back, a burning bat, and it's like one, two, three. And then I was like, "This is a very interesting smell that's coming from my back." I was like, "Water, water, people, water!" Yeah. So my hair had caught a little bit on fire, and then <laughs> oh. like, like I could see my shirt later. It has like little burn, like yeah. like burn marks. You know, it wasn't that bad. Like, but I was like, "Please." Put me out. Uh. Those girls are not nice to each other. They really, really beat each other up. Mm-hmm. I went beat to one of her shows and wow, it's, it's rough. They're not nice to each other. So beat each other half to death. Female pro wrestler from Austria hitting yeah. the stages here in Japan. Yeah. She has great abs, by the way. Her abs are awesome. Go check out to- Toxic Spider Tekla. Check out yes. her Instagram of that. Check out her abs. Fantastic They're stuff mate. on her Instagram right yeah. now. Next one, we had another legend, legend on the show. Amazing. Oh my gosh. Katsuhiro Harada, who mm-hmm. produced Tekken for crying out loud. Tekken, which is very, 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 very acute right now because uh, episode like eight, Tekken eight has yep, just eight. been released. Yep, 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 yep. Did you work with a team of martial artists or was there someone on on your team who's a martial artist and oh. could take you through all the styles? So uh, no, the 例えば、えー、やっぱり我々のファイティングゲームを作るスタッフがマーシャルアーツに興味がある人間が多い、もしくは経験者が多いので、So まあ、if you want to make a fighting game, there is a lot of people in there who love fighting or fighting games or martial arts as such or even have done it before. まあ、私自身もカラテやテコンドー、柔道。Oh, so he's also doing karate kondo and judo. So he has experience in martial arts あとはやっぱりチーム内にこうボクシングやその少林寺拳法あとは結構体操選手としてこういろんな動きができる人とかそういうのがたくさんいましたねそう so even in the team there were people who could do boxing other types of martial arts so there's like a big mixture of people having a lot of skills in that team ただえっとやっぱりプロ の人をこう雇っていろいろ教えてもらった方がいいのでえっと一生懸命 
、当時はあんまりインターネットでこう検索って難しい時代だったんですけど、えーえー、っといろんなジムとかいろんな道場に直接、あ直接行って、あの、ちょっと教えてもらえませんかもしくはゲームのために協力してもらえませんかっていう形でプロに協力してもらった。So, of course, though, you want to get taught the skills from a professional, and at the time, there wasn't the internet, so you can't just type things easily and find stuff. So, they would actually go to different dojos. You know the term dojo, of course. You guys probably know it already, like training centers for martial arts people. And then there, they would go and please teach us your skills, or actually, we're working on the game. Can you help us incorporate with us? But that's good. If you haven't listened to what they said before, go check that one. It、out. was so interesting having him in because, you know, like I grew up somewhat playing Tekken.、Mm. And so. Now you if, became if, the if, wonderful martial artist that you are. If somehow you don't know, Tekken's a fighting video game that's been around since the 90s. We used to play it in the arcade in Australia, right? So it's so interesting because there were so many things in that game when I was a kid. I was like, well, all right. And now that I'm here and I speak Japanese and whatnot, I'm like, oh. Like,、oh. there's the character Mokujin,、mm -hmm. who's a wooden man. The tree, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's like, <sighs> yeah, and you're reading it in Australia, Mokujin! You just have no idea, you know what I'm saying? Now, now like, you、oh, read Mokujin it, oh, it's a wood man. Oh, it's a wood man. Oh. Nonetheless,、uh, why is there a wooden man <laughs> fighting against karate fighters and whatnot? Hey, we, we found out the truth about the panda in an episode. Let's not spoil it. We'll watch、the、it. Panda? Yeah, go check that episode out. It's about、That's... the panda and taking the big problem. Next, we spoke about a bit of、uh, how religious are the Japanese? Yes, episode 65.、Mm -hmm. And next, it was 66 was、oh. the devilish, tasty, oishi culture, the food culture. Isn't that the, the oishi culture? As in oh, no, it's the oishi, oishi culture, not the oishi culture. <laughs> Fandom culture of Japan. Fandom culture. Well, which Kathy Cat read a wrong thing? Oh, d e a r t h a t one. culture. Maybe I just want dinner. <laughs> 67, 68, your mate. My mate Carl Card came in. <laughs> My mate Carl Card. Spoke about being an actor in Japan. And actually, the hurdles of it and how hard it is、mm. to be an actor in Japan. We had three episodes with Kyle as well. Three episodes. Because he、yes. talks a lot. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> you said the actors are very frustrated. Can you tell us a little bit more about that as a foreign actor? You said there's only soldier and pre <coughs> pretending to be a foreigner, literally, who just goes and says, Where is the station? Okay, so. This isn't true for like commercial work. Like、uh, commercials, you can get a whole bunch of different roles and stuff. You can be you know, a, a wizard, you could be a, a businessman. Professor. Be, a, a, I was a dog once, a dancing dog. I mean, I've been you were, everything. What, you were a dog? I was a dancing dog. It's still、uh, like Tokyo, in anyone. It's just like a Tokyo Denoku type of thing.、Hmm. And I dance in a dog like suit. In a dog suit. In a dog oh, okay. I was, was wondering、yeah. whether you were like motion cap, then they put that on a dog. No, 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 we had skin tight dog suits and we had little、oh, cow eyes dog noses and we have a whole little、yes. spiel. And that's been constantly renewed every year, which has been、oh, great for me. Right. But、um, yeah, you can be anything in a commercial. But on Japanese movies and Japanese dramas, you're always, for the most part, An English teacher, maybe a soldier, like I said, a soldier, priest, and sometimes a priest, yeah, because、yeah. they like period pieces here too. So,、yeah. unfortunately, in Japan, anything in a period piece is going to be a soldier, it's going to be a priest, it's going to be your first kind of like a English teachers and things like that.、Mm. So, the, the roles are kind of limited, especially to period pieces. Like anything、mm. NHK is going to be soldier. I got to play a famous translator in a, a Uh, Japanese period drama, a taiga drama. I was Ernest Sato. Oh. It was like the, the, the OG of like translators from Sato? England. Sato? Yeah, it was yeah. Sato. Yeah, and everyone's like, the Japanese like that name because it sounds like a Japanese surname, like Sato.、Mm. Yeah. yeah. Isn't But, it? Yeah. No. What's the thing? His name was actually like, a, like an English name. Episode 70, 71, and 72. First is what is J pop culture?、Mm -hmm. Second one is why do Japanese love food so much? That's、oh, where、mate. the oishi culture comes in. Third、are. one, Japanese manners and unwritten rules、mm -hmm. you need to know before you come to Japan. In Western societies, we're very much focused on the individual kind of society.、Yeah. I scream louder, I get what I want. I want this, I get it, no matter what other people and how it will affect other people. While in Japanese society, it's a group mentality. Yeah. Yep, yep, so yep. In, instead of putting yourself first, you try to put yourself lower or even yeah, last、lost. in order to make the group happy.、Yep. So that's a big difference because a lot of people say, Why should I put myself last? I'll just end up last. That's stupid. But in Japanese society, someone else will notice that you did that and then they'll reward to you by putting themselves last.、Mm. And It's like a give and take more than a I take what I want kind of society. And I think, as well, in Western culture, we value words like 
honesty and transparency. Mm. Whereas in Japan, they value harmony. Mm, so harmony. you can be as upset as you want on the inside as long as everyone's smiling on the outside yeah, and we're all playing the game. Very important, actually. Though, just nothing in Japan is communicated clearly ever. Mm. So go watch that episode if you're going to come here, especially if you're going to have dealings with the Japanese mm. beyond just, you know, casual, polite, ha, 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 ha. Then on episode 73, we talk about how to go viral mm. on YouTube mm-hmm. with the Ask Japanese director. We're the director of your channel, Ask exactly. Japanese. Exactly. Yeah, mate. I will tell you the truth about the YouTube. Mm. Money-wise. Oh, ooh, <laughs> you want to tell? Yeah, do tell. Okay, we have half a million subscribers and <coughs> 1,604 videos, mm. right? So, so, actually, actually, we don't have get enough money for the two people. It's not enough to cover our wages. Yeah. Wow, to cover your living costs? No. 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 All right, sounds like a tough gig. Yeah. You hear all these stories about people becoming millionaires off YouTube. Million, ta-da. I think... If you go viral and mm. continuously go viral, mm. at this point in time you have a chance. But in between, we had the adpocalypse. Yeah. If you oh, know, right. the apocalypse. a lot of ads got drawn. The first time I met you, you and Joey were talking about the adpocalypse. Mm. Yeah, <clears throat> pretty much. So the adpocalypse has changed a lot of things. Before that, you could make a career and a living on YouTube. Yeah. But then they pulled a lot of ads back, mm. and now even mm. though you see more ads on YouTube now, you've seen at least two yeah. recently. It hasn't really, for creators, increased the the money we get out of it. Right. Because every year they kind of lower how much creators get. Yeah. And Especially the, in the past three years, yeah, the, after they, the COVID happened. They really lowered yeah. a really? lot of things. Is that because everyone became right. a creator yeah. during COVID? And Possibly. as you know, the Japanese economy goes down uh, dramatically. Well, and the yen is yeah. also quite yeah. weak, yeah. The yen is very weak. So many companies doesn't want to pay money for their advertisement for mm. the YouTube. Oh, so hang on. So we're forced to watch these ads. Yes. Mm. But content creators are getting paid less, mm. even though we're consuming more freaking ads as opposed to the content we clicked on in the first place. Mm. Seems unreasonable. It's very yeah. unreasonable. That's actually why memberships have become a really important thing mm. for a lot of YouTube memberships, channels. Memberships? As in like Patreons and things like okay. that. Um, yeah. You can now directly on YouTube become a member of a channel. And oh, I think it's hmm. like $4 or 5 oh, What wow. is our lowest? I think it's 4 Right. And that means you're a member of the channel. You get a little like a sticker next to your name. You can yeah. use specific little special badges. Contents. And we will, yeah, during live stream, yeah. we will see them and special contents. Mm. They have access to some special things that we upload yeah. for them to say thanks for oh, supporting okay, us. Right. Because literally at this point in time, every member does count to help us create revenue because mm, the ads right. are not doing it. If you get millions if you're up there with PewDiePie you are fine yeah. but even for half a million it doesn't even cover my wages yes. and then that? episode 74 well, my mates from my group baby beard came in Yay. hey girls from baby beard we are uh, idol unit and so forth and the girls came in and we interviewed them and whatnot and you can watch yes yep oh, yeah. so, so what is your appeal point you not oh. point oh. Nande, shou, suzu. Suzu. Ah. Ah. <laughs> my appeal point <laughs> Mm, high tone voice, shining smile. Yeah. Yeah. That is the yeah. answer. That's a beautiful so smile. Look at Susan's mm, smile. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's what won her the audition in the first place. <laughs> she came into the room, first person through the door. <laughs> Big smile. It was so nice. It was lovely. She came in. I'm like, ah, we're using her. She was wonderful. Oh, thank you. Yeah, sweetheart. What a good girl. Oh, fantastic. Excellent. Good answer. Good answer. Thank you. What is your charm point? Um, I've been. Thinking about it, but <laughs> I am not sure with my appeal points. So what do you guys think no, about mine? No, 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 there's oh, a lot of charm then, um, points there. People tell me I look like Quokka. Quokka Wallaby. Uh, do you know how what do you say it in English? Quokka to you know dobutsu shiteru. Quokka shiteru. Yeah. Shiteru. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Not even. We're going to have to bring up an image of a yeah, quokka. Yeah, yeah, please, week. please. Edit well, that's to your quokka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your quokka oh, okay. If you search in Google. It was a fantastic episode to have you girls on the show. It's good. Yeah, a good one. Well, it's been really colourful. I love cuties. the studio looked amazing. And then our that's when our producer and director of the podcast decided to go to the UK to get his master's. Yeah, by the way, here's what happened. Like, uh, it was episode 72 or something. So just a, a handful of episodes before. Yeah, we no, no, just to a the handful. End. The episode before he said, oh, by the way. By the way, I'm leaving. By like, the way, wait, next what? time is the last time we're recording. I'm like, like what? what? Sorry, what? Pardon? <laughs> just a second now. What? 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 <laughs> Which is like, so next time you're coming in is the last time. You're like, what? Uh, hang on a minute now. What? So that's <laughs> how season one ended. He's like, I'm moving to the UK. Goodbye. To get my masters. Well, 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 well power to you. Yeah, right. we wish, we're wishing him all the best, but that's how we then started season two. By the way, bro, are you watching these from the UK? Are you, UK? Are you watching the you show? You better be. You better be, bro. Oh, you better be. You, <laughs> better you'd be, launch bro. this. He's like, woo, nuts to this. <laughs> Just out of here. Enjoying fish and well, chips and what have you. Probably all the fish and chips. It's rare to hear someone leave a Japanese company no. to study abroad. I think no. that's, again, another bold, yeah, brave yeah. move, mm. which makes you so special. You go your own way. <laughs> Everyone say that. It's really? You, you are real. Really? <laughs> Everyone Good, man, surprised. Yeah, I think that's a brave it's move. It's wonderful. Yeah, oh, yeah. No, this beautiful face you're going to be seeing in the UK United soon. Maybe Kingdom? you bump into him so sometime. That means mm -hmm. that um, a cat with beard is going through a restructuring since we are losing our producer and director. Mm. Mm. So this is pretty much the end of season one. Mm -hmm. Yes. And then uh, season two began. And then we're at change season studio. two. Change of studio. Change like a few of episodes studio. Change of studio. Change of equipment. Little by little we've been getting better. But yeah. hey, um, you guys don't know or see this, but we've been working extra hard to get all the equipment in here. Little by little, we improved this with the help of Hidyoga, our editor, making this absolutely fantastic. What Thank you so much. Thank you are you, a legend. Thank you Thanks so much for making stuff. this happen. And now look at this. We have good sure mics. Mm -hmm. We have sure. a, sh a camera over there. Industry we have like standard. all shenanigans mm -hmm. and we have actually Shiori, your manager, mm -hmm. doing the fine tuning on it. It's going great. Thank you. Yeah, you Thank know you. what? You and Shoz and Yoga, you guys did a great job. I contributed nothing at all to the technical aspect of this. You just had to look pretty. It's fine. That's what I'm here bring for. Bring your humor. Bring the bring the pretty. And if you remember, it's also good that I'm pretty because on that boat with Sean Nichols, I lost tic tac toe because I'm stupid. Do you remember that? Do you remember <laughs> no, that? No, I'm not sure. I don't remember that one. Uh, don't worry. Moving on. All right. So episode 76, 77. First one was Okinawa. Yep. Anything about Okinawa. And then 77, why Halloween got cancelled that year. Yes. Why was Shibuya Halloween banned? When? Too much fun. People had too much fun on Halloween in Shibuya. Everyone's out in the streets partying. Things got out of control. There was some mischief. There was some mayhem. A bunch of youths flipped a truck. Yep. And now there's no more party for anybody. No more party, actually. <laughs> it's such a hilarious, such a... Shibuya uh, Ku, like the part of Tokyo that's called Shibuya Ku, like the city part of it. District Shibuya District. District, thank you, that's the word. Pretty much said, do not come Tokyo. to the city for Halloween. We don't want you stinking youths Ooh, in None of that fun time. Nighttime street drinking <laughs> is very much taboo. It's so funny how it's exactly where all the nightclubs and entertainment are, and yet that's where they're shutting down. They're Fun time trying to shut it down. It's so funny. They're even oh. trying to uh, tell people to not sell alcohol yeah. during a specific time, which is, oh hold my. on, it's October 27th to mm -hmm. November 1st, which is pretty much the Halloween weekend and the days after. I reckon uh, the sale of alcohol probably constitutes a good 80% of Shibuya's economy. Yes. <laughs> I so... want to argue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so that's that. So if you're going to be in Tokyo for Halloween, uh, you've been urged by Mr. Ken Hasebe, that's the mayor of Shibuya Ku, mm. don't come to Shibuya. We don't want you there. Which is probably also cancelled this year. Is it really? It's cancelled I, I, again? I, I would assume oh, it would man. be unless they like build a... I think they Isn't it funny how there's Check such, out the episode. There's such a push for tourism at the moment and all this cool Japan stuff and they're just so desperately trying to bring foreigners in to stimulate the economy and whatnot. But then it's... Don't but we're that. putting the lockdown on fun of all kinds! You know? <laughs> yeah. 
I mean, that is, a, yeah, I think they have to find some sort of different oh. solution. 78, 79, we had Indigo and Ali on the shore mm. show telling mm. us why they're leaving Japan and the shocking truth about teaching in Japan. Those ones are good. Yep. I was in a really bad school and um, I, I really didn't look out there. Like I was basically stuck at my desk for like eight hours a day, except for the one hour I taught. I couldn't leave. Mm. I couldn't do anything. I didn't, I didn't do anything. What happens if you did do something? They wouldn't let me. <laughs> they oh. laugh at you. Don't do anything. I don't know. It, it was weird. It was. It was. It was not the best introduction. You know, coming from like being doing influencer work in America to like being verbally harassed in front of you. Like, verbally harassed. Yeah, I experienced a lot of power yeah. harassment. That's what? like a thing that people don't talk about, or at least they. It's not common, but like. I experienced a lot of negative stuff while I was there, and that was kind of a bummer, okay. you know. Sorry, sorry. Can you elaborate from whom? From the other teachers, or from yeah. your other superiors, or from yeah. Home? So like my my Japanese teacher at the time, the English teacher guy. There was two of us. There was me. There was another English teacher for the sixth graders, and then my teacher who was for uh, the seventh, eighth, and ninth. And one of them is uh, not from Japan. They're both from Japan. Okay. Yeah. So the teacher I was with, he was like digging through my computer and like digging what? through my stuff. Wow. What? Yeah. And what? so yeah. So like they, there's things that people don't talk about this underbelly of like mm. the Japan. You come in with this preconceived notion, but you forget you're on a rock with a bunch of other humans. And tell us, Kathy Cat, you're going to say earlier, well, why are they are leaving? leaving? I mean, they're leaving because they're superstars now mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. Sweden. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> Andy Girl has now become a drag race superstar mm -hmm. and we wish them all the best because mm -hmm. holy moly, they're big now. It's so it's so great to see them it's up the grow so fast. Um, Endigo's uh, latest song, All Star, that All was Star. number one of the charts in Sweden. It got on the to day number release. one. Yeah. So proud. Mm, so good proud. job, bro. Good job. It's Check awesome, man. them out. Good job. All right. Episode, we are, we're almost at the at the end of this. Oh, now. 80 episode here. 80, <laughs> the truth <laughs> joke about, about Japanese online dating. Oh, if you throw the word online into anything, it instantly means it could be horrendous. Oh, you know? yeah, yeah, that's true. This app had had a very bad rep in Japan, yeah. and it's trying to change that by literally drowning Japan in commercials oh, right now, mm. and that's Tinder. Tinder. Tinder is currently trying to get people to sign onto the app because it had a bit of a bad negative rep. Yeah. And now they're literally putting a lot of money at the stations. There will be huge posters of like, find your true love. Rare event, there will also be LGBTQ plus oh, people right. like, like hugging and stuff on posters in Japan. Oh, Haven't wow. really seen that before. Yeah, so rare. they're really trying to push like everyone's welcome mm. on this app. We're very inclusive. Come on over, find your true love. Mm -hmm. If you turn on YouTube in Japan mm -hmm. right now, they will also, uh, or if you turn on Spotify or similar, they will also keep mentioning that they have now a find your love. <laughs> and where they actually say the same sentence of like, the old day of dating is over. <laughs> your, your thinking or how you think love works might be outdated. <laughs> so they're really trying to get people to sign in. Find your love through Tinder is a big, big thing. They're trying to push down um, and make sure that people subscribe to there. When I was young, you would go up to a stranger and start a conversation. But that way of doing things is dead. <laughs> Next one, 81 is why do Japanese females want to marry early? Oh, marry early? If you throw the words female and want to marry into anything, it just it could end up horrendous. Oh my God, <laughs> episode 83. <laughs> Don't Lady Bits being silly, <laughs> relax, internet. <laughs> Don't make this mistakes in a Japanese hot spring. So oh, how do you enjoy the words of hot, the hot and spring? Sorry, I'm being stupid. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm, I'm, being, I'm being ridiculous. Please. <laughs> no, seriously. All the best things about the onsen culture yep. in Japan. Oh, you need to listen to that. Eighty-three. We're dropping some more facts about autumn, autumn. foods in Japan. Mm -hmm. Awesome. All of these were very well re researched yes, by Shiori. She like, looked at stuff mm -hmm. for us. She brought some things to, uh, to our attention that you can't find anywhere else. Mm -hmm. Research Shaws, as we yeah, call her. Yeah, mm -hmm. she does a really good job the there. The bookkeeper. Mm -hmm. It's like in John Wick um, uh, 3. It's like when he goes at the start of the film, goes to the library um, where he needs to get the Russian fairy tale because there's the the prick your thumb thing of a jig inside the Russian fairy tale book. And then he has the fight with the gigantic dude. She always like um, the woman who does the cataloging with the books and gives him the thing so he can find the book. That's like Shiori. That was a really long curve to get to the point that he wanted to get to. And this episode is already <laughs> past 30 Except minutes. Shiori is far more important than that minor character who just pops up and then you don't see her again. So really in a lot of ways, Shiori is nothing like that. Let's let's find a different one for next time. Um, and next one, we're going to go to a <laughs> 
I did throw in John Wick though, which was good. Oh my god, I love John Wick. You should just like you should just told that she is John, John Wick, Wick and she goes and she slays she it. She already is John Wick. She, she already secretly slays John Wick. It. She pulls off her face and it's Keanu. Keanu Reeves slay it. Um, I mean, she's also Neo. Which means she can bring us out of this matrix. Autumn foods in Japan. Yep. Most popular spots for spectacular full foliage. This yep. was not a weird cut on YouTube. That was just how I uh, went how in there. How many communicates? 85. Where to take your Christmas date in Japan? Where do you take your Christmas date in Seasonal. Japan? Seasonal. We had all the illuminations light up. So if you yep. want to find yep. out, check it out. 86. Mm-hmm. Why do Japanese eat Christmas cakes for the holidays? Mm-hmm. Christmas, Christmas exposed. Certain cakes that are have sparked our interests and <laughs> we <laughs> Look at this, they look delicious. Um, don't there they? is now Bush de Noel. Yeah. Sometimes in Japan, Pardon you me. see the Bush de Noel. Pardon me, what did you say to me? Bush de Noel? Bush de Noel. It's it sounds French. like you're swearing at me in French. What's that? <laughs> it is like, it looks like a tree log lying down. Oh, yes. And those kind of cakes, they're usually like chocolate coated or with some brown coating because it looks then more like a. Oh, this character a, here, yeah? Exactly. So, Bush de Noel is, I think, like a, a staple that's been around in Japan for a while. It's it's the typical French cake. Uh-huh. I'm okay. not sure how it, it actually really, looks in is... France. If you want to let us know, let's know. Yeah, let us know, our French viewers. This is a typical French Christmas cake, really? Yeah. You know what? What did you not see in any of those catalogs? Because I looked. Is there British mince pies? Oh, no mince pies. And Christmas pudding. Oh, Christmas no. pudding is so strong, so dense, that even when you set it on fire, it doesn't die. I feel like Kathy Cat has a lot of emotions surrounding Christmas. Expose. 87. Right. Japanese and New Year's food traditions revealed. Woohoo. A lot of exposed, revealed, Very a lot good. of extreme buzzwords. words. Buzzwords. We need yeah, them yeah. buzzwords. It's good. It's good. It's 88. Important. Discover Kathy Cat. Sorry. 88. <clears throat> hey, I read the wrong one. Fitness tips from Lady Beard to crush your New Year's goals. I do like that episode because yeah. I started doing the thing that you So you started stopped. working out. How's it going? I started doing it. I started doing it. I haven't done it this week, but I've done it last week. Good. How are you finding it? Yeah, it's good. It's it's good. I feel good. a lot better now that I started doing good. it. Good. If you're going to have a day like Christmas when you're going to consume a whole lot of calories and delicious just on one day, um, that's sort of, you know, fine if as long as you plan for it and you kind of schedule your eating and the rest of the, you know, either side of it appropriately. So kind of exactly what that girl said on the street about if you're going to eat your whole pizza, then you need to diet beforehand and diet after. Then that's sort of actually similar to the advice that I'm going to give, which mm-hmm. is say it's, you know, Say you're going to have your Christmas dinner on Christmas Day, on the 25th, yeah? So that's when you're going to see your family. That's when you're going to slam your osaka and slam your sugars and slam your everything else. All right, no worries. Just make sure, you know, whatever you can do three or four days beforehand and then preferably three or four days afterwards, you're dieting nice and hard so that that day is the day when you consume all your calories. I'm not saying starve yourself on the other days, just make sure you're taking in better calories like green vegetables and lean meats and these kinds of things, lean proteins. And that way, when you do get that huge carbohydrate hit, number one, you haven't had many carbohydrates coming in the week prior. And you probably won't have many more coming in the week after either until you get to New Year, but this will prepare you for New Year as well. Mm-hmm. And then what I also try to do is on the morning before the morning or the afternoon before the big meal is I try to go to the gym and do a really heavy weights session. Because if you go in and you do something like your legs or you do deadlifts or bench press or something, something that's a big compound movement that uses a lot of different muscles, then that's kind of when after doing that, that's when it's appropriate to now slam your body with sugars because that's when your muscles need replenishment and that's when those sugars are going to be somewhat useful. Haven't really lost that much weight yet, but that's fine. I'll get it. Yeah, but the process has begun now. Exactly. Good. Good job, bro. Yes. Good. Good. Number 89, discover Kathy Cat's secrets for healthier habits. That means the best way to start the new year with some healthier habits that get you into the right direction. I think whenever I feel like I'm kind of losing grip on my life a little, I use those again and it kind of got, centers me back, gets the right things going. I mean, you are just a culmination of your habits because exactly. we are habit creatures, humans. Mm. Check out the episode. Oh, have a look. 1991. Hey, your mate Pinky came it's in. It's Pinky. Pinky. She came in and talked about how to be a J-pop idol or how she moved from J-pop idol to Gyaru Rapper. Gyaru Rapper, that's right. So you keep YouTubing and running around Japan being cute and eating things. Actually, that didn't really work out. I was like doing way better with YouTube. So oh, I okay. found another agency and they were very willing to work with me on the music front because I was just starting like, I want to 
make music. I want to be more creative. They were a lot more open to me dyeing my hair pink and like、mm. having a personality instead of just being like a random white girl.、Mm. So I signed with them. I met a boy and moved back to America. Whoa! Oh, all right. Okay. It was all not、right. the hair. Yeah. It was. It was not the hair. It was not, not the, the visa. Makeup.、It's、not the restrictions. It was not the visa. It was a romance. Okay. I, I wouldn't call romance. No, honestly, like I moved back to America so I could break up with him. Oh, Why? What? Stop! What? What? Stop, my、what? friend. This、what? story doesn't make any sense. It doesn't. Whiplash. It does not make sense. You move. Stop. <laughs> Are you are you sure you're ready for the lore? Because I did not prepare you guys. <laughs> I got whiplash from、I'm、this situation. So what? This, we, I've never heard of bam, someone bam, 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 you're back. abandoning a career、we、and moving thought, countries to we, break we up just, with someone. We just went one direction and straight into the other direction. Okay. Very impressive.、Mm. Very and impressive. also, if you don't know what a gado is, she explains that too.、Mm-hmm. Check out the episode.、Mm-hmm. Next one, big one. Big one. Only two and only three. Your mate. And my mate Yabatan came in. <laughs> Yabatan. 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 Big Krista.、Um, from a warehouse in Norway to comedy superstar in Japan.、Mm-hmm. Was one with you with, with some snow. <laughs> yeah. Talking about the snow. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the only line I remember is "the snow is white and so am I." That's the only <laughs> line I can remember. Exactly.、Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> It was an accurate statement, all things considered. But I was、uh, so I was experiencing with these different characters、yes. because now okay I had the attention of foreigners with、yes. the with the kind of British accent、mm-hmm. you know,、um, and then I had this French character which is like Konnichiwa mina san, oh ketatsumuri tabete, you know.、Uh, <laughs> I realized when I did this character,、um, Japanese people would like laugh so much. Oh、like, uh, really? Because they would they couldn't like all my. And da di do de do became gagi gu gego, so because my R, this is a bit difficult to explain, but my R's sounded different to Japanese people. Okay. okay. So it would become very cute, kawaii. Okay, cool. And if you're kawaii in Japan, you can do anything. Winning formula. All、yeah, right.、Sure、okay. okay. The, the whole journey、story. revealed. Yep. He was awesome, wasn't he? He did shorts、time? before there were shorts. Pardon me. He did shorts or like short,、oh, short. videos before there were short videos. I thought you were saying he wore shorts, and I was like, I don't remember that. He wore shorts before they were invented. I was going to say he wore shorts before <laughs> there were shorts. I was going to say he was awesome. Ninety four. We had rent a boyfriend, rent a girlfriend. Oh yeah. If you already rented your boyfriend or your girlfriend, if not. This is how you do it, it. Including the rent a person who does nothing. We also oh yeah, the rental, the、that. rental. I don't know, do anything, and the rental family. It's so funny, bro. Who comes up with this? And you can rent me, and I'll just come to your thing. I won't do anything. Won't、I'll、do just anything.、Stand. I'll just stick around.、It's、so funny. Rental nani mo shinai hito. Love it. Episode ninety <sighs> five. Entrance exams in Japan. And, uh, you your healthy、thing. habits will be good for passing those. Ah,、uh, maybe those. And also, we had the first time our、um, Shiori actually pop up as a VTuber. Yeah, yeah. virtual Shiori. So, like in my high school, like、uh, I was applying for、uh, like Minor General University.、Mm. So they didn't have a lesson or a special course particularly for my university. So what I did is I borrowed the This red book from the small library, and I studied by myself、mm. for the university.、Um, so the、mm, really popular theory is if you want to pass the university exam, of course, like general study is required, but also like studying your university's past exam is most effective.、Mm, I see. So yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. So you always like my teacher always told me to do at least five years, if possible, ten years,、wow. and like see like what they want, you know. And is that also potentially because some of the same questions from an old exam might just get recycled into your new exam? Uh, that is it can be said to not the university's second round exam, but first round exam, yes.、Okay. So they have a first and a second round sometimes with the exams as well. Yes. Mentioning that. Yeah. So first round is called like the Kyoto Testo, standardized entrance test、ah. for university.、Mm. Yes. So and that is made not by the university; it's made by the government. So、oh yes, I remember that one from my friends. They used to call it Santa exam, Santa scan. So everyone. Takes the test. All、oh, right. On the same weekend, everyone who wants to go into university 
And correct me if I'm wrong, but I heard you. everyone takes the test and then you get a score. And then with that score, you can apply for a university oh, or you can apply to apply for a university. <laughs> meaning if your score is too low, you can't even take the entrance yeah. exam. Kind of so try. you need to have a good score to then put that on your paper to then mm. be ready to actually apply for the another entrance exam to actually get into that specific university. Oh, did Virtual you like shopper. the VTuber guys? Let us know about that one. All right. Next one, we have actually a triple feature. The next mm-hmm. three episodes we had mm-hmm. actually Two guests at the same time. Double up. And we were talking about the charm of the main cafe. Mm -hmm. What a con cafe is. Mm -hmm. Don't mistake those Mm -hmm. sometimes. And the shade of the maid. Oh, the shade of the maid. I think you titled it the shade of the maid. I think I did title the shade of the maid. Sounds like something you would say. It can be a shady business as it turns Mm -hmm. out. Nothing but shade. Throwing shade. In my previous life, so in the previous place I was at, there was one case in which a customer tried to touch... Uh, inappropriate, inappropriately touched Ooh. one of the cast members. Whoa! Yeah, and I was just coming back from like handing out flyers and stuff, so I didn't see everything. But I just saw my boss at that time get out and go to the customer. He immediately gave him his receipt. He had to pay, and then he escorted him outside. We know, you know, bye bye, master, whatever was really? in that location. And he was banned. I don't know. My boss was there for a bit, so I don't know what he talked to that customer um but basically if they break the rules especially this bad um where it was obviously not an accident uh you will get banned from the location and i think that applies to every maid cafe location yeah you don't want to go to work and they traumatize as a side thing of your job so it's there to protect you yeah it's there to protect us yeah did you have like a situation where the maid cafe helped had to protect you in a way yeah i had one situation the customer was asking for my uh, contact information i think it was about my twitter i have uh, i had the official twitter as the maid but he wanted my uh, my uh, private twitter Mm -hmm. and we had some like coasters on the table and he wrote his private information Uh. like i'm not interested in his private information but he wrote his id and uh, like Give, gave it to me and he was like oh and uh, please so now you can write yours so i purposely wrote my maid id right uh. but i was like so confused i really wanted to say to tell him strongly that no i'm not going to give you my id and this is all you can get and just follow me on my maid account but it was first time i was very confused and thankfully uh, one of our fairy uh, noticed it and he came to check it out he saw the id he checked my id uh, the one I wrote and he yeah he got uh, angry at the customer and it was pretty similar he told him to leave immediately he, they finished the payment he just uh, escorted him to the elevator and told him that if he if it happens again uh, the, the he's going to be banned so he didn't get banned, but he had like this first warning. Uh, yeah, with our mates Tom Onyan and Luna. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then the episode yeah. before Representing this one. the Eastern Bloc on the Cat with Beard podcast, Tom Onyan and Luna. Oh. Poland and Hungary represented in maid slash con cafe format. Oh, yeah. We've been mm. mixing it up real good. And mm-hmm. then episode 99, we had graduation ceremonies in Japan. Graduation ceremonies in Japan. Because that's the season right now. And here we go to episode 100. 100, brother. So, so tell me, wait, do you have a favorite episode? I tell me do. about memorable things. Okay, I'm, I'm going to tell you the favorite episode and I'm just going to preface it by you don't have to return the favor. But my favorite episode, honestly, was actually the the episode where you open up and talk oh, about your past and very everything. kind of you. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's, I'm not like just saying this to be nice. I found that very inspiring because it's oh. something that hasn't been up online. Like so many people know you they know ladybird but they don't know how it actually came to be and how much hard work went into it where you were in like the stages of life how you just made the costume came up with the concept all of that that was so interesting that you felt comfortable to share all of that it's very kind of you i was advised early in my career not to reveal all that Mm. because i was advised that it's you know if people know how hard you've worked that's so much less sexy than just, I just descended out of the sky and was amazing, you know? So I was advised early in my career not to um, spill the beans on all that, but, you know, I did in that episode, so you can go and listen to the whole thing now. Check it out. It was a fantastic episode. It's very so kind of you. Thank very, you. It's very, very kind good. of you. It's very kind of you. Your favorite episode. You know, i got to tell you, probably, uh, favorite episode, I'm not sure, but but favorite thingamajig that happened was probably bringing in Sean Nichols because it was so personal for me. Oh, because, yeah. Because I dubbed him. Yeah. So, you fangirling sparkly well, eyes. Yeah, and it's also 
also kind of the moment that I realized, wait a sec, as I listened to someone else's podcast and they said, yeah, one of the reasons I started a podcast was so I had an excuse to meet people I wanted to meet, oh, right? And I was sitting smart. there and I was like, who do I want to meet? And I was like, wait a second, I always wanted to meet that white dude who I dubbed in Ultraman. Let me see nice. if he's in Japan. Like mm -hmm. Google him up. I'm like, oh, he's in Japan. Let's bring him in. So that was a profound moment for me because I was sitting here looking at him and I'm like, for months, I stared at your face on a screen, mm. watching your lips move to match the timing of your lips moving. And now you're sitting in front of me and we're having a pleasant conversation. So that was quite profound and incredible for me. And you kind of came full circle yeah. with your career as well, linking yeah. that up and like having you both in front of the camera there. And then Sean took us on the boat. Yes, he took, <laughs> took us on a boat too. So that was good. So thank you very much everyone for tuning into 100 episodes. It's been a pleasure. 100 episodes, please. Thank you, bro. First of all, let us know in the comments what was your favorite episode. Mm -hmm. Right now, put that down because we might actually read that out because we get the chance to read that out on our very first Cat with Beard live stream. Yay! Great success. Yes, and we will celebrate that live stream on the 29th of April mm -hmm. at 9 a.m. Japanese time. We will go live and you can see us do something. And again, depending on you guys, we'll change what we do. Are you going to explain what you mean? You want to you explain? Shall I explain? You explain if you want. All right. I don't think I understand it properly. Please share this video or any of the other videos mm -hmm. with all of your friends mm -hmm. because the more views, real views, mm -hmm. don't just reload, this video gets, the more squats mm. the lady beard does. Mm -hmm. So for every view... For every view, for every view, you sure. Mm -hmm, every view. For every view on this video, mm. Lady Beard will do a squat. The YouTube one, not the podcast. The YouTube yeah, the one. YouTube view. Yeah. So um, on when we do this cat with beard live stream, I'll be squatting on the stream. That's what we're talking about. Exactly on the stream. For per view on this video here, there will be one squat. And I don't mean like squatting outside a convenience store, like we're working out squats. Actually, a workout squat. And a workout squat. you better hit that like button right now mm -hmm. because for every like. I will do a squat too. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Do you, are, are you an avid squatter? No, not at all. Have you squatted ever? I'm well, exercise wise, maybe I'll have to tr start practicing until that day. All right. It's going to be a workout stream. <laughs> I'll try my best. Um, the most squats I've ever done in one hit was 1,650. 350, 650. Well, sorry, I think it was 1,600. Because wow. I did 1,350 and that was my record. Then I broke it with 1,600. That's right. So 1,600 views on a video, frankly, is not that many on a video. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, if you, I can say if you share this a lot, it goes out to more people than that. That's share it. Just that's a lot of pain I'll be in, just so that we're all clear. That'll take like two hours to get through. And it's, yes. Uh, squats. Please share it. And also and share. And like it. So she has with to squat. <laughs> Oh my God, yeah, please like it too. <laughs> please share it with as many people as you can. Mm -hmm. We have done a hundred episodes, lots of hard work in there and a lot of facts went into that and a lot of like inspiration for your life, for coming to Japan, mm -hmm. learning the language, making it in Japan. A lot of things can also apply to, to people who don't even want to come to Japan and just want to like feel inspired to mm -hmm. follow their dreams. Mm -hmm. So those would be something. Go check mm -hmm. out this podcast. Please share this podcast like your favorite episode of the podcast with friends. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the live stream. We see you in the live see stream. See you in the live stream. 29th of April, Japan time mm -hmm. at 8 and 9 in the morning nine for us, morning. but probably for you guys in the evening of the 28th. In the US, it'll be yes, sometime in the evening on the Sunday, now mm. the day before. Our mm. very first live stream. Your chance to see us live. Mm -hmm. It's going to get sporty. And we'll see you next time on episode 101. Yeah, from Cat, Cat with, with Beer. Bye. 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 B